You are listening to a Dynamic Works Productions podcast. This show is available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio Network, and many, many more podcast services around the world. You can find all our content, music, videos, books, podcasts, and more on our website, www.dynamicworksproductions.com. Have questions, comments, or concerns for us? Head on over to the social tab on www.dynamicworksproductions.com if you'd like to talk to us. Now, on with the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Fork in Your Ear podcast. I'm your host, as always, author, podcaster, gamer, occasional streamer. Uh, I forget all the other monikers I tried to jam in here. Uh, Did I say my name? Yeah. I didn't say No, you haven't. I did. No. I didn't? No. Oh, I'm Tim K. Trotter. And joining me from his green screen that i can see the edges of so it looks like he's just got a cape yes. up <laughs> in, the in long my, overdue my scene, from the month-long sabbatical fun. yes the uh the nadiest of foos nate foo hi how's it going old friend uh well i'm healthy again so that uh that does make things nice the uh sabbatical was Unfortunately, my fault uh, of the kiddos uh, and any parent with single digit age children will know how often they bring home every germ in the book. Uh. So we, we went through a round of that. And then, of course, you know, with the wife being a teacher, she's exposed to the teenagers that also don't know uh-huh. how to keep anything clean. So. Right. My immune system is constantly barraged and uh, occasionally it succumbs. Oh, well, you know, so, so, yeah, it, like, uh, so it goes. Yeah, I was I was literally coughing so hard um, that I was almost to the point of vomiting. Yikes. Yeah. And that, I figured that, that was fun. probably a good reason to not do something in either the video or audio format it's it's funny because when you messaged me i guess over a month ago and you were just like still doing show i'm just minor dying and i was like we can take oh no i missed that one because we're early we're recording a little bit early that's why that would have been late Um, we are technically right on time yeah for once um yeah, you were like, yeah, we could still do a show. I'll just live. Yeah. And I was like, it's cool. We can postpone if you're dying. And then you're like, cool, because I have a fever of something, something, something. Yeah, I think it was, and I, I, was I think like, it hit 101.5 at that point. I was, I was like, like, yeah, you know. I was, I was like, this gonna, man's fucking delirious. <laughs> I was going to attempt to do it, and then everything just you went downhill and so fast. It was like a plane with no engine. That is, uh, that is how it goes. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, it's been a long time since we haven't talked in yeah. a while. And, uh, what are you doing? A little, little angry orchard. Mm-hmm. Here's my phone. Okay. We're going to spin the ring as is custom, and we'll get into all of the things that y'all have missed on this podcast for over a month. <laughs> I guess there's probably a lot to talk about in a month. <laughs> uh, yes and no. 
All right. We have landed on entertainment. That's entertainment. All right. So let me scroll up. Anything that I pasted. Actually, when was the actual last last time we podcasted? It was quite literally a month ago because we took two weeks off ago and then two mm -hmm. weeks later. Hmm. So entertainment. It would be probably February uh tenth, seventh. Yeah, now, we'll yeah, start seventh from week, Seventh we covered. We covered the Rick and Morty well, not speaking for several seasons. Yeah. Um, I believe we, no, we might not have talked about Bob Iger. All right, cool. So this is an old headline. So from <laughs> February 10th, uh, Deadline was reporting that Disney CEO Bob Iger is open to selling Hulu. Mm -hmm. um, as of this time, a whole month later, uh, my understanding is that's still the case and still up in the air as to whether or not Hulu will remain in Disney's custody or not after all of the vigorous uh, other shakings that Bob Iger has been doing within the Disney company. Right. Um, I read some articles this week uh, where he was talking about how due to the performance of the Star Wars movie Solo, uh, and why they pulled back uh, so heavily on the movies there. And he was saying that uh, perhaps they were too hasty with, you know, pushing so many Star Wars films out. And that uh, okay. the ones that do get pushed out should be more of a special event. But they have no problem pushing out the shows it. like crazy. I mean, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't call the cadence of their shows particularly crazy. No, not now, but I like we literally had what Boba Fett, Mandalorian, Obi Wan, like right on top mm. of each other. I mean, I guess, yeah, reasonably, you know, a good chunkage of months in between mm -hmm. uh, occurred with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, old, old, old headline there. Speaking of another old headline, uh, Amazon Prime confirms that we are getting a second season of the peripheral, Yay. which excites Yay. both myself and nate so that we can continue to guess what the fuck is going on <laughs> in that delightful show <laughs> did they um, confirm a date yet at the, as of this point or i i, I don't know who no no <laughs> just okay. that it's coming um i thought this was rather strange so Apparently, they have confirmed a live-action How to Train Your Dragon film. Okay. Like basically, a remake of the first film, but in live-action. But it's also by the first writer-director. Like, the dude who made the franchise a hit to begin with. Right. So that's interesting. The question is, why? Because <sighs> that's the Hollywood trend now, that... I guess Disney set with all their things of like, hey, we have all of our animated things and we're turning them into live action things now. You know, and DreamWorks is like, hey, we have animated things too. <laughs> but why? Like, it wasn't. <sighs> no, like, it, uh, yeah. it's not needed. No, it's not needed. It's not even the only that thing I can. A big departure from, you know, the, the pen, and, uh, pen and pencil type animation that a lot of the Disney stuff is going live action like Pinocchio, Lion King, etc., etc., Little mm -hmm. Mermaid. Um mm -hmm. this is 3D CG. Mm -hmm. to now live actors. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit of a weird one. Right? And it's what are you going to do with the dragons? You're going to CG them. I'm oh, yeah, they're going to be CG. So You bet your ass they're right? going to be CG. Maybe some like hand puppets <laughs> when they need to touch Touch a dragon, I guess. I mean, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I'll probably a... watch it because I'm a big fan of the franchise. Oh, me too. So. I mean, I guess all you can say is like, well, it's the original dude. Uh, right. Good luck. Right. <laughs> like, that's that's sure. 
How to train uh, your avatar. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's going to probably be in that quality. Well, I wouldn't even say it's going to be in that quality realm, but that like style. <sighs> just because you can doesn't mean you should. Speaking of just because you can, there's a live action Tetris movie coming out. Yes. And no, it's not going to be like Pixels, which I actually uh, yeah, attempted yeah. to watch the other day. And it's it surprised that's surprisingly a good little fun movie. Is it? I avoided it specifically because it looked terrible. It does look terrible and it is terrible. But when you like when you just sit it's terrible and watch good. it, it's terrible good. Yeah. OK, I, I have a soft spot for terrible good yeah. movies. Yeah, I was like, I, I avoided it, too, and it just happened to be like, oh, this happens to be on the AMC channel, and I've got the kids mm -hmm. around. What can I watch? Eh, let's throw right. it on, see what it, you know. It's got video game stuff. Maybe my kids will like, oh, ooh, look, it's Pac-Man. And my mm -hmm. kids ran in and went, ooh, look, it's Pac-Man. Mm. And the ghosts were Mini Coopers. Well, anyways, of all places for a tetris movie to land it is going to be an apple tv plus original movie and it's not uh, like all right it, yeah it's it's kind of a documentary and it's apparently a uh uh drama documentary ish mm -hmm. style of the guy who brought tetris stateside mm -hmm. which and i started looking some stuff up after this interesting trailer i encourage people to go check out this trailer for the film because it looks fantastic it's starring um taron egerton is the lead guy of who i don't know his fucking name but you know man from king's men and when he's not doing king's men he's doing weird biopic movies from elton john to eddie the eagle to i guess tetris mm -hmm. i guess that's his niche now or niche as some pronounce it um but yeah i guess there was like running from kgb and like trying to steal the code there's all kinds of crazy shit going on when i started looking up like how tetris even got out here right and why the guy who made it is now an american citizen residing in hawaii right <laughs> and i was like what it, it's so it's perhaps totally a thing and there's a big there's, perhaps there's some yeah there's there is a <laughs> dramatic story behind the simple game of tetris i mean i watched the trailer and i was like God damn it it looks good <laughs> yeah hold on a sec i gotta open a window in here oh go for it he's getting up from his chair he's walking to the right of my viewpoint of the Skype screen. His chroma key cape is waving in the breeze. Fluttering about. He's moving back through his chroma key. Uh, blanket. He's now doing Kung Fu in front of the camera. While he puts on his headset. It's a good and thing I back. actually took the headset off because I realized that I didn't turn down the speaker volume. I've got kids oh. sleeping in the next room. Oh, yeah. So it goes. Um, yeah, no, with the, with the computers in here and with me gaming right before we started and it being, I don't know, kind of seattle out here lately. Um, the heater's been going in the house, so. Oh, yeah. Didn't you guys, like, have fucking snow? We had snow. We've had rain the last two days. We've had more gray days than we've had sunny days. But uh, yeah. So yeah, Tetris the movie coming out uh, March thirty first. So the handful coming of weeks. soon to an Apple TV near you. Yes. Um. Then moving on, more sadness. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Willis officially diagnosed with dementia as his yep. conditions worsen. Uh, that just sucks. It does. You know, I see, unfortunately, far too many people with dementia, uh, just because of my line of work. Right. And it's just, it's just a sad, bad thing. And that's just put a pin in it. That's what it is. Yep. Um, yeah, no way to, no way to really sugarcoat that. And it just sucks. Cause you know. He was he was act actively working on stuff and, you know, there have been 
Hollywood rumors going around that he's basically being fed his lines through, through an earpiece. Yeah, it has been, been going around been for a while for now. A while, so this kind of lends credence to at least why that was happening. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, well, you know, so it goes. So it goes. Yes. Um, let's see. Were there any other? I'm gonna do more news stuff first, then we'll get into what we've been watching. Mm-hmm. We have uh, a True uh, Lies series coming. Yeah, there's a True Lies TV series. Uh, I guess it's out now. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, and I don't. I, and again, it's one of those that. God, man. That like, was that mute was in time. Yes, that was impressive. <laughs> For anyone that was not seeing this, Tim yeah. just had himself a sneezing fit and managed <clears throat> to wedge his thumb in between the pop filter in time that, like, I caught it out of the corner of my eye. Him spasming <laughs> before I realized what was going on. That was that was impressive. Yeah, my my button's right that- here. Can't even that see was a that moving. was a that was a full four. Uh, yeah, oh, you know what I just realized? I didn't. I don't have. I don't have that going. <laughs> I should do that. The Skype backup. Oh, <laughs> we haven't done this in a while. <laughs> I was wondering what just popped up in the corner of my uh, screen. So yeah, a True Lies series, and again, this is one of those. I I look at and I go, just because you can doesn't mean you should but maybe i should watch it before i give it a it's fair shake I just, the the thing looks good but mm-hmm. i the premise you know, it that is, it's based on it's i just been don't out know 10 that, days and i haven't heard anything about it at yeah. all so it's either terrible or it's just okay and right. nobody cares about it the trailer looks good um i well, showed my wife service it's on paramount plus it's on both so it's on cbs regular ass cbs okay i don't know what time and paramount plus okay. it's one of their combination yeah shows yeah. Yeah. where it's premium on paramount plus but also it's designed around ads for regular tv sure, viewers sure. so that they can double dip into the finances of it okay well, maybe I'll have to check it out. Cause I, yeah, yeah, I was a big fan. Well, I wouldn't even say I was a big fan of the movie. Um, it was, it was an all right movie. Oh, wow. Well. We're gonna, we're gonna have some disagreements there. Sure, sir. Sure. <laughs> allowed to be wrong. No, I'm kidding. Um, mm, it's okay. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> Well acted, well cast. Jamie Lee Curtis, mwah, love her, but yeah, the story itself was kind of like okay. Okay, so. all right, fair enough, fair enough. I think I said at the time when I showed the trailer to my wife, I said the best I could probably hope for with this show is if they somewhat approach the tone of one of my favorite beloved TV series, Chuck, mm-hmm. where it's like spy but day in the life kind of thing. Sure. Uh, you know, not that they haven't done that on TV before, but yeah, we'll see. Yep. We shall see. Um, so this is actually pretty, pretty gross. So the Air Versus, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Guggenheim, uh, who's an executive producer of that entire series of series mm-hmm. over on uh the cw network uh could not even get a meeting or a audition to write or executive produce anything in the new james gunn dcu universe Mm -hmm. um and publicly not like super like meanly like not like oh fuck you or anything but he was but just was like, he's like what i'm a little tone. bit shocked that yeah. i've done the last 15 years of my life to these properties and by all accounts fans like them and i couldn't even get like an audience right. <laughs> to be like hey what's next mm-hmm. use me again <laughs> like i'm ready to go but i guess he's moving on <laughs> which yeah makes makes you wonder it's if just... he burned some bridges in the uh in the industry somewhere along the way i mean that's also possible too i mean he you know he could you know from the outside looking in uh he's a great executive producer and writer you know within the industry he could be a dick 
Mm-hmm. Um, my wife Holly, just texted Hollywood me is a, a gif of Hollywood a, is a small town when it comes to certain things. My wife just texted me a gif of a fat redheaded boy blowing me a kiss. I'm confused by this gif, but is is it the kid from the, the Sandlot? I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've seen the Sandlot. Oh, it's a baseball movie. Yes. Right. That much I know. Hence, my excuse for having not seen it. But it's not really a baseball movie. It really isn't a baseball movie. Fair it, enough. Just, baseball is a plot device. Okay. Okay. Um, but then our last piece of entertainment news, and this is the grossest of all. Mm-hmm. So Warner Brothers executives score massive bonuses for themselves after the massive HBO Max cutbacks. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. They are the devil. <laughs> yeah. This this is the scum and villainy you expect from executives Holy across the board. It's crap. like we didn't make money, but we stopped losing it. Can we have more money, please? Jesus Christ. Yes, that movie so... we made and we can, and we're able to write off on the taxes. See what that saved the shareholders? Bonuses. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Makes me never want to watch another WB property ever again. Right? It's not. It's not good. Right. It's not good. Um, despite the fact that I think since we've recorded, we had pretty substantial trailer for the Flash movie, mm-hmm. starring everyone's favorite criminal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which sucks because the movie does look really good. Mm-hmm. And there's just something about seeing. Michael Keaton kicking ass as Batman again. It's just in the, like in the Burton Mobile. Yes. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would have expected to see Man of Steel Zod back though. That was uh that was rather surprising. Never never in saw the, it, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know that that was him. Ah, well, he played a good Zod, in my opinion, of sure. the various humans who have embodied that character anyways Terrence, Terrence Stamp, what, what you've been but... watching in the last month nate well it came back and i'm so happy that it did card has got me mm. just all for clemped of you know like i am really enjoying the season even with the questions that are how did mm-hmm. they get to where they are now kind of thing like season two ended and then season three happened and a whole lot of stuff seems yeah. to have happened in between right? that nobody's talking about that's not the point because season three of picard is the picard season that i'm sure you and i have have wanted the entire time yes uh it and is delightful <laughs> how many episodes is the season supposed to be uh i believe i'll just is it going right to be the eight to ten because we're four in and there's still a lot of stuff that I saw in the trailers that I haven't seen yet in the sure. series. Uh, Picard is a... Please be 10. Please be 10. Please be 10. Because if it's 6, we're fucked. It's 10. Good. Okay. That gives yeah. them some time. Yeah, so, man, in four episodes so far... I'm caught up, by the way. Are you caught up? Yes. Okay, cool. It's great. Yeah. Like, the writing is better. The directing is better. Just everything, like, is better across the board in this season. Everything Um, fits. There's the things that, like, the fact that they got Jordy's daughter name right, like... Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't just like well, and you know, and you know that that is, um, his actual daughter. Yeah, Lavar Burton's actual daughter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we haven't even seen him yet in right in the show yet. You know, we still have uh, a gaggle of characters 
to mm-hmm. reintroduce in their post thirty year voyage. Well, I mean, y- you can catch most of them in the in the in the trailers. So anyone that's as Tim looks uh-huh. away, what do you mean you're not here? You can't announce you're not here. I- I got it already. Yeah, Tim's a good wife, a good good wife, good husband. He, he made a, a point wife, to tell me. He <laughs> made a point to tell me, "Hey, we can't start until I get this ice cream out of the mini freezer, so that my I'm, wife I'm is not mad." Do you want to give me a kiss? Okay. Well, Sorry, even if Fork you, Fam. Even if you were it. streaming, hi, wifey. Do I get one too? Good night. No. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> but uh anyways. <laughs> where was I? Um no, like the in the trailers great. in the yeah, in the trailers and everything, so it, it's not so much spoilery. We know we're supposed to see some iteration of data slash lore slash Well, it's lore. Right. For sure. For sure. Um, mm-hmm, because we don't that's know if, what the fucking trailer was, right? But we don't know if we're going to see data at some point in time in that same iteration, or if it's only going to be lore, or right. I mean, here's my thing: as a data, like data is my guy mm-hmm. on next gen. Um, I thought the season, what they did season one with data, was a lovely send off mm-hmm. for that friendship. Uh, which was much better than what we got served in Nemesis. Right. Um, which destroyed me as a child. Um, <laughs> so would it be great? Sure. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you could do, you know, because the entire first season of Picard was all about Picard mm-hmm. and Data and that whole thing. And they gave it an entire goddamn season because, I mean, it, you know, admittedly, the, yeah. their relationship was one of the bigger parts of the entire Next Generation franchise. Um, well, and the only the only reason I bring Data's name into this is because of the other character that we know that we're getting and how that ties back into TNG. And that's with Moriarty. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't know exactly how he's going to pop up. Right. Yet either. Hence or me looking, why. Hence me looking at the episode <laughs> count going... Okay, we still haven't seen Jordy. We still haven't seen Data Lore, whatever. Doctor mm-hmm. Soon. Uh, we still have like we're running out of episodes, guys. We got Worf. Well, which I and... could, uh, Worf was telegraphed perfectly and not at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was great. Also, I I didn't even realize we didn't even have Worf this at this uh, episode this week. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't have any of the B-plot happening that's going to obviously wrap around into A-plot. A right. So, and again, but I feel like... episodes. I feel like the next jump for them, though, because it's interesting, because those four episodes are pretty contained. Right. But some, me, some, uh, something about... On the Titan. Something about the, the device, right? And that device mm-hmm. also being on the... Uh, what was the name of the damn ship? The Shriek, Shrike, Shrike, Shrike. Yeah. I believe not right. the Shriek, the Shrike, the Shrike. So yeah. that that weapon being on the Shrike and also used elsewhere, are mm-hmm. we timey wimeying a little bit? I hope not. We did enough of that last season, right? But it feels like that because like, we, we don't both, we don't need and they like we don't need both. It's an experimental thing that suddenly could be mass produced, so it's got to be the same weapon. Yeah, I mean, I assume, but we also don't know because it's a TV show and could potentially be an un- unreliable narrator. We don't know that the wharf, the B subplot is happening simultaneously or concurrent with the events on the ty- Titan. Right. For all we know, that could technically be first or last. Know, yeah. Or last. We don't know. Um, Because that's just how it is. But anyway, season three of Picard. If you're an old TNG fan, uh, and they've said from the get go, you know, this is this is our, you know, if we never make another one again, this is our. We want to go about with a ten episode movie bang, right? And, and doing it, it doesn't waste any fucking time getting there, and things feel well paced, deliberate, 
I'm got a shit eating grin. The captain of the Titan to ear. is phenomenal. Oh, what a great choice to have it be just a fucking shithead, as right? he calls himself. To, but not. But, uh, yes, but no. Yeah, but, but like, I was like, shit, like, I, an honorable I get shithead. it. Like, I get yeah. this fucking asshole. <laughs> yep. You know? Um, yeah, that's good. I, man, just, I, if they can keep this momentum going for another six episodes... Oh man, this, it'll yeah, definitely this, this be... could be one of the few ten out of tens. Yeah, it's yeah. So far, I haven't had, I haven't felt like, oh man, what a waste of an episode. Right. Each one has just like been a little more, like all the callbacks, all the different things. Like it's just, it's mm-hmm. just fucking great. <laughs> For sure. Um, have you been able to watch anything else? I've been uh, current to the two episodes of Mandalorian that have currently come out. Um, okay. The That's second nice. one, I uh, thank, thank God, actually something happened in that episode because the first one was such a throwaway that <laughs> I was almost, I was just like, I'm not watching the series anymore. When I saw the runtime oh, of the episode with credits was like 28 minutes, I went, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand. Like Twenty eight minutes, pacing. eight minutes of credits. It was like a twenty minute recap of the last season, not even the whole series. The last season. I mean, here here's where I sit on the run times for the Mandalorian. Number one, it it's seemingly aimed towards adults, and it should occupy a minimum of a forty two forty five minute runtime sure 30 minutes that plus sa- credits yeah that being said the most successful star wars tv show there is which is star wars clone wars sorry mandalorian fans clone wars has fucking eight seasons mm-hmm. um is a 30 minute format and it fucking really really works for that show um this show just can't seem to fucking decide whether it wants to be a 30 minute show or if it wants to be a long show right and it just fucking jumps around and it's just it just you know what it feels like remember when we in uh, uh the early 2000s and we would get uh like side webisodes to popular tv shows like i remember there was some shit with Bowser galactica there was some stuff with lost and you could like log in and they would be like five to 15 minute like little side story things yeah, little vignettes yeah you know like officially like canon but like within the show like little extra shit mm-hmm. you know and like those were great you know but then i feel like as the years got on like those webisodes just got longer and longer and it was like well if they're just gonna fucking make a goddamn show out of this webisode <laughs> just make a fucking show right don't give me this cock tease tune in next week when our sponsor from gillette yeah. presents you know same like bad that time fucking, same bad channel uh, yeah god it's 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 yeah. silly that's for sure so yeah i'm kind of like i uh, this the the second episode redeemed the series a little bit for me mm-hmm like it had the right amount of action. It actually put moved the story somewhere other mm-hmm. than just flying through space. Well, and for Clone Wars people who've seen all of Bo-Katan stuff mm-hmm. and have seen the city when it was actually a city and right. had people and wasn't fucking wrecked. It was really cool to like revisit that in live action. And, yeah, and, and to see Bo-Katan Bo- actually handle the Darksaber without any issues, unlike. Well, it's not her first time. Right. <laughs> For, for fans who have been right with this character for longer than the Mandalorian. It's like, well, duh. Right. You know, Jessica's like, how does she know how to do it? I was like, because she fucking held it for a while. Right. Didn't remember that part where they mentioned in the last season well, that she kind of fucked it up. What I what, <laughs> see, what for someone like Jess or myself that weren't in tune with the Clone Wars things, we mm-hmm. had they done the other side of that and said, okay, it's dummy heavy for her too. Mm hmm. That wouldn't have, like, we would have been like, oh, okay, yeah, the thing's just dummy heavy until you learn it. So the fact that they just said, no, she's held it before. Not only has she held it before, you can tell. 
she's hold, held it before. Oh, yeah. Right? Even yeah. for dummy me that doesn't know that, I went, oh, she's done this before. Hmm. So. Indeed. Super happy with that. I do my, um, my writer and or viewer's intuition, though, is making me think, though, that they're gonna try to, like, set up like a like a love like a boyfriend girlfriend thing between mando and let's Kirk. hope not yeah because like the first episode where she's like fuck off get off my planet and it's like yeah and then and then Grogu okay comes well back she's and gonna like, go where is he? she's gonna yeah. go kill him and then she doesn't kill him and then she's making him fucking stew and i was like okay i see what's happening here <laughs> but we'll see We'll see. Uh, okay, so Picard, Mandalorian, any anything else in your month sabbatical? No, that's about it. Other than my usuals, my rookies. I see. Uh, well, we had our season two of Gordon Ramsay's Next Level Chef start. Mm -hmm. So we've been watching that ridiculous cooking competition. Uh, good fun, good fun. Although I was betwixt to learn that there is a UK next level chef that has had a whole season already, and there's no goddamn way for me to view it in the United States without, without a fucking a VPN. VPN. Yeah, and then I'm like, that kind of irks me because I would totally fucking watch, you know, for the the British variant of it that also has Gordon Ramsay in it. And I knew about it because Gordon Ramsay is tweeting about it back in um, back in December, and I'd like forgotten about it. And like a month ago, he was like, "Oh, season finale of Next Level Chef UK," and I was like, "Oh, right, fuck, I can't." You know, I looked it up. There's no right. There's no place to see it, and I'm like, and I've seen and screenshots no, and, and no clips. plans for it. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense, especially given that it's Gordon Ramsay, too, right. because it's like he's already kind of international at this point. You know, it's like, dude, what the fuck? So I'm hoping eventually it comes to some streaming platform over here, um, mostly because I think that the contest is just fun. It's fun to watch. I don't know. These fucking Gordon Ramsay cooking shows, they're just fucking entertaining, you know? Um, so, uh, we've been watching that. We're about three, four, three, four episodes into that, into the second season of the American version. Um, we just finished the fourth season of, uh, one of that Netflix's more popular shows, You, uh, mm -hmm. which if you don't know is about the obsessive, uh, guy who, wants to love someone but then his love is controlling their lives and murdering people around them to better their life circumstances so that they'll fall in love with him um if you eliminate the competition I'm, yeah uh season four is pretty wildly different uh, i'm not going gonna go to spoilers into that particular show uh but season four is fantastic there's been a lot of shit online being like oh season four is fucking terrible i was like and i and having just finished it this morning me and my wife are like, are you fucking high? <laughs> Season four was fantastic. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yes, it's it's different than the other uh, preceding uh, three seasons. You know, the, the prior three seasons kind of follow their own same format, you know, and it obviously works. And then four is like very different. But it was weird for me going back to Picard for a bit. Um, and without spoilers for Picard and also you, but the actor who plays Jack Crusher plays a character in you called Reese Monta or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it was super weird when we were going back and forth from Picard <laughs> and they're like, we can't fucking escape this actor. He's in all the stuff, all the things that we're watching right now. What the fuck? And then, and it sucked, <laughs> it sucked for me because, um, I think that actor is really good. And I found out that his first role was actually, it was like 2006 or something like that, which was the 
uh, Fox movie studio adaptation of the first book of the Aragon series, which is a terrible series of books. I don't encourage them to be read by anyone. Um, but I did read it and I did see the dumb fucking movie in the young now. And I remember the movie being terrible and him being bad in it. So the fact that he's a good actor now is like, all right, man. All right. Bravo. Well, speaking man. of actors bravo. in Picard that I w- wasn't expecting to see, and I don't know that I actually saw him, but I saw the name in the credits and I'm still yeah. trying to figure out where he was in the episode. And that's Thomas Decker. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, he was the one with Worf and Raffi. With the drugs. Yep. Really? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I saw, I saw his face too, and I was like, God, he looks fucking familiar. But he's not on IMDb. Right. He's in the fucking credits. Yeah. I, uh, I was apparently, like, apparently, I saw the face, and then it's like, yeah, I was just watching the because I watched the final credits, and it's like, Thomas Decker, and I went, up uh, when? Apparently, Where? there's. There's even more conspiracy theory with Thomas Decker and Star Trek. Uh, he was apparently in season one of Star of Picard, mm-hmm. and he was in uh, an episode of TNG. And it wasn't until after Picard season three that the producers realized this, and they were like, "What the hell? You're supposed to let us know you were you were in stuff." And then I guess this is how it goes. I don't have anything to substantiate this other than rumor and hearsay is that I guess he just likes Star Trek. And so whenever something comes around, he just like goes on additions for it. Right. And like tries to get in and he's gotten three times. Now. And for any <laughs> of our listeners that are hilarious. wondering, who the hell is Thomas Decker? Um, John Connor. Yeah. He played the TV version yeah. of John Connor in the Sarah Connor Chronicle. Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yes. And if you don't remember that, he was the best friend to Hayden Panettiere's character in the first season of Heroes. Yes. Going way back. So. Because I fucking, for some reason, remember shit. Useless yeah. shit like he's that. Been, he's been <laughs> in a ton of stuff, and it's just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he still yeah. looks young. Like, I'm like, bitch, I saw you. Yeah. In Sarah Connor Chronicles yeah. in 2009. It's been a decade. Stop looking like a teenager. <laughs> quit being Paul Rudd. Fuck your, yeah. fuck your genetics. <laughs> yeah, quit being Paul Rudd. <laughs> Fucking, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so we've been watching that. Um, me and the wife still been trucking on fucking True Blood. <laughs> we have a season and a half to go. <laughs> and uh, so there's that. Um, and then um, I saw. Mommy uh, Kissing Santa Claus? Yes. Uh, no. I saw Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. What'd you think? Because um, I have not seen it yet. I actually, I just recently saw um, Wakanda Forever, finally. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see it till Disney Plus either. Right. And that, that I have many words to say on. In fact, I wrote something about that. I don't know if I have it here. Maybe I, maybe I have it. Uh, oh, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm it's, just going to. It's, just, it's I'm evergreen gonna... enough because we're pushing an hour just on this topic. Yeah. Are you saying. Are you saying this in the positive or the negative? Yes. I, I'm saying God it's an evergreen topic enough that you can, we can shelve it for another show. Fine. Fine. I'll shelve it for another, another yes. show, even though I have a thing here that I wrote. That I wrote. Anyways. But, um, Ant Man of the Lost, Quantum Mania. Yeah. Um, I loved it. My one caveat to that would be the first 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes are bad <laughs> okay um specifically and i don't think this is a spoiler given trailers but basically anything that's not in the quantum medium <laughs> part of the movie is weird like the outside earth san francisco stuff just feels really weirdly try hardy 
Okay. Um, and then and then you get to the quantum realm and everything's fine. Um. Yeah. Uh, Ant Man Lost Quantum Mania. Um. There's been there's been some people saying some negative things about it. Uh, I don't think it is a bad movie. Um, I think it is a fun, uh, good ride. There's definitely, if you want to poke holes at stuff after the fact, there's definitely plot holes that if you, you know, when I reached the credits, I was like, yeah, that was a fucking great movie. I had a great time. And then on the car ride back, I'm like, well, but what if? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess they just kind of fucking glossed over that. Huh. Well, okay. (laughs) um but yeah no it's uh it's a really good um it's a really good ant-man movie um i would say that it's definitely like here's the thing i think the second ant-man movie is consistent in being like ant-man in its style and quantum manium is like really different because it's it's basically like super crazy sci-fi like right. there's all kinds of crazy aliens and stuff and and whatnot, but I guess they're not really aliens if they're like microscopically different amoeba people or something. But there's just like there's like crazy shit like everywhere, like the all of the ba- like the like what's going on in front with the actors is just as interesting as what's going on behind the actors, like the backdrops. Like it reminded me of like you know kind of like destiny in a way where it's like there's a lot of cool shit happening in the art in the background and my eye is drawn to it and it looks fucking wicked right what's happening in front of me now (laughs) uh so it's it's a visual feast that is that is for sure um i i'd say uh like i said the not quantum realm stuff is weird um, and then if you're a fan of Hope Van Dyme, um, don't pro- probably not the movie for you because her screen time is reduced to punching people. <laughs> uh, strangely that enough, sort of thing. a person who gets a ton of screen time is Michelle Pfeiffer's character. Actually, uh, she has a lot to do in this film and her her secret history of yes. being in the quantum realm. Um, but it's it's just fun. Um, as many people know, I used to have a Marvel podcast, and I don't know a lot of Marvel things. I can see diehard Marvel people being upset with the MCU iteration of a particular super, 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 super famous Avengers level villain that is treated kind of as a side character in this. Um, I think it makes sense for the MCU, but I can understand people who are pissed about a particular thing that occurs okay. to a secondary villain in this uh quantumanium film. Um yeah, it's it's good. Um a really good setup for Kang the Conqueror, who's going to be the new Thanos basically moving forward mm-hmm. um for the MCU. Um yeah, I had a really good time. And then a particular shout out. Um, I've actually always thought that the scores for Ant Man, done by Christopher Beck, were particularly good, but man, Christopher Beck's score for Quantum Manium is on another fucking level. Like, like I've listened to it a lot since I finished the movie. There are just a lot of bangers. Like it's, ah, it's like epic orchestral with like jazzy bass and like sci-fi low-key synths and it's fucking just mm, chef's kiss fantastic fantastic work in the score department that's 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 what i gotta say about that so yeah i think you'll have fun with that one when it comes to disney plus um it's a good time it's a good time when's that getting released you know did that come out it came out it must have come out only like a couple weeks ago so i don't think it's coming out for a while maybe okay i'll keep an eye out for it maybe 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 late april like maybe like an easter thing or maybe like uh maybe may 
possibly. Okay. Um, well, no, isn't Guardians of the Galaxy out in April? I don't. Maybe, 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 maybe by then. Maybe by then. Um, yeah, that's entertainment. Let's spin the ring. That's entertainment. Did, did you want tech? No, it's calling it. Oh, uh, it's not. Oh, it's life. Oh, <laughs> fire! 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 <laughs> Yeah. Um well scrolling back up, scrolling back up. We haven't had a lot of submissions in the life category. Mm -mm. Other than your Jack Daniels is causing Last of Us to happen. Oh, with which the... I guess did bring me I have been watching all of The Last of Us. I am I'm caught up with that. Have you watched that show? I have not yet. Okay. Well, it's only got one more episode before it wraps its first season, mm -hmm. so you can That's what I'm do waiting it for. all in one go Yep, if you have the stomach to get through it in all in one go. Okay. I'm told it hits dads worse. Um, so for those who know The Last of Us, they don't have zombies. They have cordyceps, fungi-infused people. Right. World infected. In and the video right game, now, it was done through spores, but in the <laughs> series, it's done through tendrils of some sort or fungus. I mean, the answer is yes to both. Yeah. But anyway, we're not really talking about The Last of Us, but The Last of Us is happening for real, kind of, in right now yeah. in Tennessee, uh, in whatever county Jack Daniels is cascaded in there is a crazy report of this aggressive black and white dotted fungus mm -hmm. that is aggressively spreading over wood concrete all kinds of stuff and it's apparently so strong and potent because it uh it subsists off of the alcoholic vapors of jack daniel's tennessee whiskey um and it's so strong, apparently, you have to pressure wash it off down to either the metal or the paint mm -hmm. and strip it off to even get it off. And then it regrows back in like a couple of days. Right. Um, it has not mutated to infect people because that would be bad. And then it really would be the last of us. Um, but right now, it's kind of a problem. Yeah. To the point. Like, it looks horrible. It's. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Like. And it's not good for jack daniel's reputation at all and, and when but, the, it, and they know it's coming from there because they know what the fungus is they know what it's feeding off of etc etc yeah. and when the yeah. when the residents that are nearby go uh hey jack can you come help yeah. us out with that and they say not our problem yeah my understanding is that it's taking over three of the facilities where jack daniel's is stored in caskets mm -hmm. uh to be aged and it's uh, it's a problem to the point where it has been raised as a county concern. Mm -hmm. County. Um, but wouldn't that be a kicker? As someone who you know had a podcast, that, you know the whiskey podcast. Mm -hmm. How odd does that strike you? As, huh? Whiskey might cause the apocalypse. Right. <laughs> Couldn't, Fuck. Couldn't, couldn't think of a better the one way to thing have it we want to rely on in the apocalypse right. getting some some toilet whiskey and we can't even do that fuck <laughs> <sighs> shit <laughs> yeah just to think my my personal contribution to the consumption of jack daniels it could have been part of the catalyst to cause the end of the world well, uh, I guess you're part of problem. I am part, part of, of the solution. Problem. <laughs> yeah. Hey, scientifically speaking, alcohol is a solution. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I guess in other news in life, um, I had my anniversary uh, with my wife. And I took her to go see Gabriel Iglesias, aka Fluffy, Fluffy live. Yes. Um, I've seen him live fantastic. like three times now. Have you? Yeah. 
Oh, two, nice. Two majors awesome. and one one little local comedy club. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I mean, I guess he is down in your neck of the woods. Yes. So, yeah, he had to, he had some good stuff. Um, his warm ups were pretty good. Um, um, there was some pretty good uh, stuff. He he played here at the Muckleshoot Casino, um, which is probably pro- I think it might be our biggest and biggest fanciest Indian casino over here, or Native American casino. Um, and uh, it was funny because he told this story about how he was never supposed to come back to this casino again because the last time he was here right before COVID. I guess a guy tried to jump on stage mm-hmm. and like attack him, but then it wasn't really attacking. Apparently he was like blasted out of his mind and he had bags of chips and he just wanted to give them to fly. Yes. <laughs> so he had some pretty good jokes about like, where's my fucking chips? <laughs> Which were great. <laughs> and that's been a long running bit of his with people bringing gifts Oh yeah, to the shows. Oh, oh yes, for sure. And, and how to yeah. handle those? Yeah, yeah. Fluffy's uh, Fluffy's always been a good time. He's he's probably one of the few comedians now that I like watching because he's just damn funny and he's not sure like he doesn't try to get into you know the 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 tough topics of politics or religion well, and or it's race fu- or it's whatnot, funny. He, but he does he even but he said doesn't. that right yeah he's not your yeah, bill burrs he's not your right yeah <laughs> it's 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 interesting he had he had some funny bits uh specifically about that mm-hmm. and you know says he wants his comedy to be for everybody and stuff right uh but he talked some stuff about like covid and and how I guess uh, some people like broke into his house and like stole some shit and broke some shit, but then also left his refrigerator open. And that's what he was more upset about. <laughs> right. But he wanted to put an end to it because he's like, you know, I live in LA. And he's like, he's like, so I went to the gun store. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, he did, did his funny accents and stuff. And he had this funny bit about, um, he wanted to get he pointed at a gun and gunster was you know or at least the accent he was doing was you know some southern guy right and uh he was like oh what about that gun that looks good i want i want the tutu <laughs> and he's like then the gunster guy's like what now mm. he's like yeah the the, the, the tutu. tutu the 22 it was right there it says it on the thing and he did a whole bit with it and stuff and then he's like he's like you don't you don't want the tutu because it's it's not really gonna kill them and he's like well i don't want to kill them and then he's like you're a famous comedian if you shoot them with a tutu they're gonna live and then they're gonna sue you right (laughs) and they're gonna win (laughs) and then (laughs) this funny thing on stage and he's like oh well that motherfucker's gotta die (laughs) He's like, what else you got? And I was like, that was fucking hilarious. So, yeah, it was good. It was also interesting because, like, I'd seen I'd seen comedians before, um, but it always had been like at a comedy club in a like pretty classical comedy club setting, right? Not in a oh we are as in row G, <laughs> right? <laughs> type setting. Yeah, you're at table like, twelve. Are, yeah. Yeah, there was a fuck ton of people there. Um, so it was interesting seeing a comedian of, I guess, that caliber and fame where it's just like, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, took us longer to leave than to see the show because of the parking. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that was interesting. What about you? I'm sure you've had some life stuff other than sickness going on last month. Well, my um, my oldest is about to turn six years old. And Good Lord. Right. Like, you remember a time when I didn't have kids. Do I? I believe so. <laughs> have we known each other that long? I think we have. <sighs> right. Everything just makes me feel old. (laughs) (laughs) 
how do you think I feel? And yeah, it's, you know, I have friends that go, yeah, we, my, my kids have kids that are six years old. And it's like, oh, good God. Yeah, I got a, I got a late start on mine, but yeah, she's about to turn six and she is, um, every bit of a six year old. Um, she is starting to lose teeth. Um, uh, is that when you lose teeth? I I don't yeah, know any yeah, of these things, yeah, but the, I should probably the the five to six to seven range. Attention. You're going to start losing teeth. Uh, we actually just okay. had to take her to the dentist to have one pulled because she ended up with. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got her both. My wife and I have uh, genetically bad, weak teeth. Um, so that we're sucks. we're prone to cavities. Like like soft teeth. Yeah, we're just prone oh, to cavities. Bro. That that's that's me, dude. Yeah, hundred percent literally been stared at by the dentist being like you got your dad's shitty genetics you got soft teeth yep i'm like oh what's that mean like you have soft teeth so they're just gonna be kind of shitty yeah and i'm like oh yeah great okay <laughs> just wait till they all fall out and screw new ones in that's basically where i'm at most of them are yeah. now <laughs> yeah. 35 mm -hmm. fuck but uh, yeah, um, so she had to have her first one pulled because it basically started getting a cavity into it. And it's just like, mm -hmm. well, it's going to be a root canal and, you know, instead of getting it infected, it's got to come out. So uh, we went through our first major... Did they do root canals on yeah. that young? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And yeah, it was not a fun experience for anyone involved, including her dad How that's does... sitting out in the waiting area listening to your daughter basically get you know murdered in the other room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so like how does that even work because like like the teeth i have now are not the teeth i had when i was six mm -hmm. am i just dumb is there like a third set of teeth that no. comes in by the time you're an adult no. or is it just no. a so set? these but this did, was one of the her teeth baby grow. teeth grow yeah this is one of her baby teeth and it wasn't it was a molar so those don't tend to fall out until you're eight nine ten so that okay. bad tooth would have been sitting in there for a while okay um so now she's got a spacer what she calls her unicorn tooth because it's a different okay. color um, where that okay. where that tooth came out so that the new one can grow in and the other teeth don't close around it. Oh. Yeah. And then she's got So it's her, not a real crown, it's a spacer? It's just a spacer. Okay. That's like That makes more to sense the, to me. Yeah. This is the front yeah, that, and the back that, that makes more sense to me. Because like I was like in my head I was like, okay, I've had more root canals than I can count. Right. But like the root canal just takes the tooth, tooth out. Yeah, I guess I guess when I think about it as an adult, like root canal means crown. Right. <laughs> like but yeah, they are tooth comes out the post and cap. <laughs> yeah. 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 I I got I gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, so she's got a spacer where that should be, and that was that was fun because like she came out of the procedure with a swollen cheek and then mm -hmm. of course everything feels weird after she had, you know, three adults like basically sitting on her chest trying to get all this work done. Uh she's got a adult sure. tooth coming in behind her bottom tooth which is making those loose yep. now so those might have yep. to come out again to make room Jesus. for this adult tooth otherwise it's going to grow backwards yep so yeah we're getting into that fun expensive part of child rearing <sighs> and that's just the first one we still got one more to go <sighs> um but yeah like we're trying to space that out because it seemed that, that that first visit was well the first major procedure was pretty traumatizing. Jeez. Yeah. And she, okay. Like, well, she, she took it on the chin. She was like, yeah, no, it was fine. It was fine. And then it's like, okay, so can we go back soon? She goes, no, no, we don't have to do that ever again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the child has spoken. Well, until the next time. Yeah. Until it has to come out. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. sorry, you, you inherited some bad teeth from your parents. Great. <laughs> yeah. I guess, you know, I can only hope that a future offspring of mine will get better genetic material from mother's side mm -hmm. than myself. Um. 
landfill because like i don't i don't want to pass on here's soft. here's a question for i also you. don't want to pass on all my allergies and yeah. here's here's a good question for you do on your wife's side of the family do the children look like your wife's side of the family or the spouses uh it's a pretty gamut okay on, f- between like her brother like her brother doesn't look like anybody because he's tall <laughs> he looks like the he looks like the mailman or the, the husband's he, he best looks, friend he yeah. looks very tall um her sister is super white mm-hmm. her brother's super dark um jessica probably looks the most like a proper mix between uh my father and mother-in-law okay uh, of 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 them why do you ask yeah i'm just you know, I'm trying to figure out where the genetics are gonna kind of fall like you look at my me and myself my sister and my half brother we all look like our mothers hmm okay so we know that the the dad genes aren't as strong <laughs> on, okay on that side of the family okay so, but then his his brother's kids both look identical to him. So you never know. Mm. But yeah, like so mm. when when my kids both look more like me than my wife, nobody was surprised. She's okay. she's actually had her students because she's had pictures of pictures. She's had the kids in the classroom, and she has a picture of me on her like uh, pin board next to her desk. And she had a student come up to her and go. Um, can I, can I say something without making you upset? And she goes, no, go ahead. What, what, what's up? And she goes, your kids look more like their father than they do you. And she goes, oh yeah, I know. Hmm. They did not, uh, they did not inherit a lot of her genes. Hmm. So. Yeah. You never know. uh... If you got a healthy mix, then you've got a good chance that they won't, uh, that they'll inherit the better teeth gene. Hmm. Well, fair enough. I guess that's uh I guess that's just something that's kind of on my mind a lot as all of the restrictions are off. Oh, days. you pulled the goalie, huh? Mhm. Well, she pulled it a long time ago. Sports I pulled metaphor. the hat. Yeah. Sports <laughs> metaphor. Um, so we shall see okay. what occurs yeah, on that front. Oh, well, I wish, I wish you luck. And I hope that, uh, we, we get to talk about this in a life conversation, uh, <laughs> sooner than later. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. All right. Do you, we have anything else to cover on life? I think we're good. Okay, let's spend the right time. Entertainment. Life is locked on entertainment. We've got video games. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, a lot of stuff. I've got to scroll way. Yeah, a okay. lot of Starfield, or not Starfield, No Man's Sky updates. Sky well, update. it had one. It's one, two, three, four, five. Six. These are all announcements. Seven announcements. Eight. Nine. Ten. I was like, I keep getting notifications from this channel. I'm like, ooh, ooh, oh, it's No Man's Sky. <laughs> oh, it's uh, no, it's another No Man's Sky. Yeah. Well, you got so it. Give credit. They, they do I guess it, to put to put that out of there. Enough. Yeah. Uh, no Man's Sky had its fractal update. There's stuff in it. I have not touched it. I haven't played it. Uh, and it's also PSVR 2 ready. And uh, that's got to be what, one of the first titles that's uh, PSVR 2 ready. That's not just a exclusive PSVR 2 game. Uh, I mean, it's not exclusive because, I mean, it's VR on other platforms. Well, in no, fact, but it was like, on PSVR 1 because uh, I have that. A lot of the um, PSVR 2 games now, that's where they live. Nowhere else, right? True. That's that's what I'm saying. True. This it is one of the first ones that is like a non 
PSVR 2 exclusive franchise. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, speaking on PSVR 2, we'll just get that out of the way. Uh, PSVR 2 is uh, here, according to every tech reviewer on the planet. It is the best VR kit on the market, hands down. Mm -hmm. Uh, Only drawback is it is wired, Mm -hmm. but they're like, man, the screens are so goddamn clear. (laughs) Yeah. And the finger tracking works and the eye tracking works and all the fancy buzzwords and it all works and it's all fucking fantastic. Yep. Um, Finally, someone took that from the uh, meta crown. The Meta Quest crown from them. Meta Quest crown? Yeah, I don't know about that. Because uh, my understanding is that the PSVR one was still the best selling. Best selling, yes, but technology yeah. wise, no. Like, sure, the technology was very behind. Very. Uh, but yeah, but like, it was the the technology's, the, the technology's only as good as you know when you can actually do something with it. Yeah, yeah, it definitely seems very advanced. Um, I am going to get one eventually. I say eventually because its sticker tag is extremely mm-hmm. high. Yes, that is Jesus. <laughs> it's like buying another very PlayStation. High. Yeah, I'm in no rush. It's more yeah. than that. It's like fucking six hundred fifty dollars or something crazy. Um, for an add-on, and like for an add-on, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the thing, because cause it does just connect via USB C and it's just one cable, I think, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The way Sony wins in the VR space is if they go, oh, by the way, it now also works on PC. Right. Boom. Because at the end of the day, everybody forgets this Sony is also a hardware company. Mm hmm. And yeah, you can keep your PSVR 2 exclusives on PlayStation, but like if you want to dig into your competition, right, who's all on PC and or and that's know, and that's just a, device, that's a value that's added thing. It's one of the reasons one of the yeah. reasons I got the, you know, at that point it was the Oculus Quest uh to was that I can actually use it on my PC. So it's it's just a value added. It's like, "Hey, I've got this great standalone device." that has a limited games market on it, which that's its downfall. But it's like, well, I can still get this and use it with all my Steam VR games. Mm -hmm. So for someone that's trying to stomach the cost of getting a PSVR 2 for over 600, you know, for over the cost of the console, and there's what, No Man's Sky and a couple of, you know, basically a... I think there's about 20 20 launch titles for it right now. Complete, like experiences or are they just kind of um i know the vr version of resident evil 4 is complete Mm -hmm. and exclusive um i think i saw a headline this week that said the vr version of final or not final of resident evil 7 Mm -hmm. which already was on vr on psvr 1 i know because i didn't finish it because it was scary um (laughs) right this but i mean is is now on vr 2 um and i know obviously there's the exclusive their uh, sony's big one which is they have a horizon game for it um I, I read a review on it and it was something to the effect of this is a full vr game that is the closest you'll get to being at like a theme park like experience sure for like a video game or something like that right um and uh yeah like i said a lot of tech reviewers uh like for example linus tech tips was just like this is the best vr headset i hate pc vr now am i a console gamer question mark right (laughs) mark because the headsets but yeah i'm like that's that's the biggest thing holding vr back is just content for it good quality content sure um and so again back to the original back to the original point is like it behooves sony with a USB C sure. connector to go, all right, let's go ahead and make this PC compatible. Cause again, you're selling the hardware at that point. Hell, you could sell yeah. the headset without a PS5. And now you've got a reverse proposition of someone going, hey, I've got this cool VR headset. 
maybe now I'm willing to buy that PS5 so I can play the exclusives or sure, right? So yeah, I think it's yeah, we'll me. See. It's it's not, it's not even just being like because again I don't have a PS5 and I don't have a dog in this race because I already got a VR headset that I don't use for mm-hmm. you know anything. But it's like it's just smart business. Sure. Yeah. So what uh, else came out of the? Because I know we just had the uh, within our last month of hiatus, we've we had, a lot had of the, stuff the the PlayStation uh, State of Play, right? Sure, if you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> See, and it's like it, it was like you said the other day. Uh, it's like I haven't, you know, know me, I, I haven't heard that. anything. Even in all my podcasts, I'm, it's like, hey, the I, PS, the, the PlayStation State of Play happened, and everyone's like, and, and every reviewer that I was listening to, or every podcast was like, and the VR is awesome. And I go, okay, what else came out of it? The VR was awesome. Yeah. Well, that's what's being pushed right now. Gotcha. Since it's new. Oh, and um, then, of course, the Lightfall trailer is. I. Yeah, which is irrelevant because now it's here and I played the shit out of it. Mm hmm. Um, I don't remember what else was in the state of play. Honestly, I I think I wrote a thing about it because we had just the last podcast we did. Um, Nintendo had come out swinging with that Nintendo Direct mm-hmm. and uh, Metroid Prime Remaster, right. which is flooring everybody in the video game world. Not just because it's a remake or a remaster of one of the greatest games of all time, but also because it looks <laughs> fucking. Mm-hmm. stupid stupid good um and it's 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 so funny because it actually caused like a sub argument debate right now because everybody's like oh the switch is holding back games and they point out like uh was it the november pokemon was a disaster and runs like shit and stuff mm-hmm. like that and they're still patching it to this day and then people are like oh the switch is holding back games and then people like they just they just, they just point to metroid prime and they're like what yeah. about that? Right. That looks as good as any fucking. <laughs> yeah, to see the the side by side on the GameCube original and the remaster, and it's like, oh, it's ridiculous, right? And it's even the absolutely... GameCube GameCube original, like seeing that for the hardware that that was on, like, okay, yeah. And it's funny. It's what's interesting too, uh, is because the story keeps gathering steam, actually um because there's a ton of original designers on that game who are loud on Mm -hmm. twitter and like they'll like be complaining about the craziest things like there's one developer who's complaining like like oh they they fucked up the alpha on the doors it's it's rendering in the wrong color like do you know how long i worked on that (laughs) that how dare you (laughs) um and then another person um pointed out uh, for the Metroid Prime Remaster that worked on the original game, they're like, I've seen a lot of videos, I've played it myself, but it was my responsibility to put a door in when you go into your little ball mode thing mm-hmm. that would like slow you from getting to the next room too fast to basically cover loading. Right. And he's like, I don't think there's any doors in the Switch version so (laughs) there probably isn't yeah there probably isn't i mean you know it's it's the 20 uh, it's the great elevator trick year old hardware yeah um but yeah the the things are pretty ridiculous as far as the fucking upgrade i know i've talked about it already and and i've beaten it now at this point i don't think i'd beaten it before um yeah it's pretty fucking timeless um my only thing to shit on metroid prime remastered is really the same problem that the original had which is when you get to the end you have to go hunt for these 12 fucking things and they don't fucking tell you where they are <laughs> and they're like all right go find these 12 fucking things and you're like what where i fucking used youtube videos and right. shit and all kinds of fucking shit and i still got lost trying to fucking get all fucking 12 of them and this is like the eighth time i should have looked for the old prima guide fucking i probably have it 
<laughs> somewhere. And it probably isn't a Prima guide because if it was a GameCube era, it would have been uh, Nintendo Power because they had their own magazine back then. Oh, true. But did they did they put walkthroughs and maps like that in Nintendo Power? Or did you have to call the 900 they, they made They made full books. Oh. But they were made by their Nintendo Power people. <clears throat> but anyway, much of Prime Remastered, um, there's been a ton of hubbub on the web about um, there's probably not going to be a Metroid Prime 2 Echoes remaster and a Metroid Prime 3 Corruption remaster. But it seems like Metroid Prime Remastered is selling very well for Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So it's entirely possible they could that, reevaluate uh, that decision. Yeah. And another interesting thing, too, is it wasn't just uh, Retro Studios internal. It was the original developer mm -hmm. uh, who did the remaster, but uh, since I beat the game and this was not very publicized, but it's in the fucking credits. Um, Iron Galaxy, um, which is a famous uh, port team, also worked on the game as well. And okay. if you're not familiar, I'll look at their credits here. Iron Galaxy. They have done uh, Killer Instinct. Mm -hmm. They've done... Uh, they were responsible for porting uh, the Spyro Reignited trilogy, the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy, many ports of Skyrim. Um, they've done ports for everything from Borderlands 2 to the Batman Arkham series to... Just scrolling through their list here on their own website. Uh, other Spyro games, like they have a pretty, they've also been uh, silent support studios for Diablo 3, mm -hmm. Fallout 76, Overwatch, Dreadnought, uh, and a ton, just a, just, just, just a ton of other, other games. They even apparently worked on Destiny 1 and Destiny the Taken King. Uh, they worked on a game that I've said on the show is a fantastic game, Enslaved Odyssey in the West. Um, they've worked on a, just an epic, epic amount of shit. Um, yeah, so they're no, there's, they're, they're not new to the market. No, and they're not, and they're not even like a low, right? Like, like a podunk. Yeah, they got like, chops. 10 man and maybe they're awesome you know but they're like unheard of like they're well known so the fact that th that nintendo would even let them work on something like metroid uh speaks also to their talent mm -hmm. as well um so the counter the counter the counter rumor going from some data leaks and stuff is that ports are not or remasters are not in the works of the other two titles but then the counter is well looks like it's selling really well for nintendo mm -hmm. And if Retro Studios is busy working on a proper Metroid Prime 4, they're like, well, Iron they Galaxy, yeah. Galaxy could fucking, they've already got the fucking blueprint. Right. They've already got the old engine running at fucking tip top shape. It probably would be less work than right. uh, one would think since, you know. Those were a trilogy of games. They all shared the same engine. They're all built around the same time. Probably. Um, yeah, I think the only one that would be difficult would be the third game, because by the third time the third game came out, that was for the Wii, and it used waggle and motion, and that was right. inherent to its design. But I'll point out, uh, waggle and motion was inherent to the design of uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, um, and they ripped that shit out for Skyward Sword HD when it came to Switch mm -hmm. um, and still kept it in if you wanted it um, with a different form of motion. So I'm just saying it's possible. Right. It's possible. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. What else is going on here? Uh, Starfield. Uh, delayed again. Delayed again. Now releasing in September 10th, September 9th. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, so I think a couple of things about this. <clears throat> Number one, and I've said this before, I think 
Big Daddy Microsoft uh, keeps getting the game submitted to them, and it's going through Xbox QA, and they're going, it's still too buggy. It's still too buggy. It's still too buggy. Right. And Bethesda is like, but this is how we do games. Right. And Xbox is like, well, not we'll fix fucking it. anymore. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> and they go, yes, but this is still too buggy. Yeah. Um, but so, I don't know. It's interesting. A lot of people say that uh, when you're making a video game, especially a big video game like this, it really comes down to the last three months where polish and bug and it brings your game together. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at the documentary series of the 2018 God of War that's revered, um, the director has said in the documentary that's made by Sony, they're like, the game was barely playable a couple months before we shipped it. Mm-hmm. Like, it really came together in those last 60 days. <laughs> um, and so it's like, you know, if it's coming out September, and you have to figure three months of lead time for the game to quote unquote have gone gold so it can be shipped to disc printing facilities. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't really they don't really got a lot of time left, you know, if this date holds, right? That's that's the thing. Because this is like the third no, I mean the third the concept time. of going gold now at this point is is just such a misnomer. Yeah, it's not it's not what it used to be, for sure. Right. So you but, can uh, you can put a buggy game on the disc, and then day one patch is like day one patch is just a and that's now like an industry standard. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um. So I thought this was absolutely hilarious, and Sony is getting exactly what they deserve Mm -hmm. so sony has been ordered by the ftc to reveal what it pays for all of his all of its exclusives because of the ongoing sony crying foul that they don't want microsoft to purchase Mm -hmm. activision blizzard and call of duty and take call of duty away from them specifically call of duty which i find that just in and of itself hilarious crazy how much they're fighting for call of duty i can't even believe it and what and what's funnier is uh activision pr who apparently gives no fucks um what happened right after i posted this and i don't know if i posted it the head of activision pr said um we don't know why sony's blocking this deal um i've been at the meeting (laughs) where the deal was offered to sony Mm -hmm. to keep call of duty on the thing and he literally singled out jim ryan the son the playstation president and he said no and he's like i don't know what to do with somebody like that (laughs) right like he literally was talking about it on twitter like a couple of days ago and i was like holy shit that's fucking insane um but the long and short of that is uh i've been watching uh hogla again because he has returned i don't know if i spoke on the show but uh, he had a stroke and so he'd been he'd been gone for a while uh and he's back with a little bit of lisp but uh he's got his motor function again and he's back to doing legal videos and stuff mm-hmm. and he still dissected with the, this still stuff. with the notepad yep still with the notepad um and he's been dissecting stuff and i was actually watching stuff just before this show because he had he had one on friday and he had one today which was interesting um and basically the long and short of it is sony is completely out of options and is losing favor in both the courts the ftc and public perception quickly and his prediction is that when Sony finally turns over this stuff to the FTC, not only is the FTC going to know what Sony's been doing and paying for exclusives behind everybody's backs, Everyone but is so gonna will know. Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, and at that point, they're going to be done. Right. He's like, as for what gets approved in the deal through the FTC, that's anybody's guess based on constituents. And he was saying something tonight, and I didn't get to finish it before the uh, I jumped on the show, but he was saying that the current thing being argued right now was 
Microsoft could acquire Activision and Blizzard, but not King. King would have to be divested to make that look non-monopolistic, which is interesting as King is Candy Crush. Right. And yeah, it's its own billion dollar generator thing and, and, and it's a completely different and sort of stuff it's a completely that's, different it's platform very that doesn't even compete with like if anyone should yeah. have an issue with that it would be apple sure but i mean apple's not not touching this probably with a 10 foot pole right? and they don't care probably and for that matter they're probably at this point pretty close with microsoft or at least king you know enough to say like, hey, you know, we're not going to kick you out of our store, but we're just going to take our cut like we always do. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it's still interesting stuff. Who fucking knows with this sixty nine billion dollar acquisition deal, and what's actually going to happen when it's all fucking said and done? It's ridiculous. We've been talking about this for a year and a half now. Mm hmm. Um, I'm ready for it to be over. How about you? <laughs> right. Fucking one way or the other. Decide. Right. Courts. Jesus take, Christ. Yeah, take Internet Explorer out of my start menu. Please. <laughs> um, in other news, uh, Discord's been on Xbox for a while, but Discord just became available on PlayStation on March 9th. Mm hmm. Coincidentally, I, I hear it's pretty that good. W- uh, I haven't used it. I've used it on Xbox. Okay. Um, it's it's interesting. It doesn't connect the way you would think. So you need you need to have connected it in the Discord app, either mm-hmm. PC or your phone. But to use it on console, I can't speak to how it works on PlayStation, but I know how it works on Xbox. Um, basically, if you're in a chat, go to your phone. And there's a new button that says transfer to Xbox. Okay. And then bam, it's transferred. And gotcha. There's, there's no Xbox mic. there's no GUI interface for Discord there is on no Xbox. GUI interface on Xbox. Gotcha. Um which is interesting. Well, I mean because because I would have think or would have thought uh at least like a chat like a chat interface or like a like a friends list or just like a text since xbox has all that stuff anyway right you know and then it just has like you know discord at the top or something like mm-hmm. i'm not talking accessing like what we're looking at right now for like all of our different stuff but i'm just saying like the basic stuff you know one would think right but i don't know i don't know maybe there's bad blood there since microsoft did try to acquire discord and it didn't happen so, I don't know. We'll see. So, video games. What you been playing? I have been playing Destiny 2, Lightfall. I, I, I bit the bullet and uh, pre-ordered it the day that it released. Um, hey, when, up top, me too. Yeah, when everything went <laughs> offline, I'm like, am I doing this? Yeah, I'm doing this. And then I did the pre-order, mm-hmm. so I got all my pre-order exclusives. And um, Yep, me too. Uh, other than having to buy it for two different platforms, I don't know if you did that Oof. as well. Yeah. No, fuck that. Um, no. Because my, my, uh, my wife is a console gamer for the most part, mm-hmm. like our main TV out in the living room. That's, it's got an mm-hmm. Xbox attached to it. And I have one sitting next to me if, in case I don't I want to fire up the what, PC. What kind of Xbox is attached Old VCRs. Two of them? Yeah. Dang. Load times have got to be getting worse. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, I wouldn't know. I haven't played on the, uh, on the Xbox since I got it. Yeah. But I, yeah. Get it on, I get it on Xbox because she plays that. And if I buy it mm-hmm. under my account, if I ever have to, like if I'm over at the brother-in-law's, I can fire up the Xbox uh, S over there, Xbox One S, yep. and play it. Right, it's there. It's available. So what you're telling me is you love giving Sony large quantities of money. I love giving Bungie large quantities of money. 
Uh huh. Don't make me <laughs> not, because <laughs> was that was that a sentence? Yeah. Did don't you? make me <laughs> not buy Destiny because I'm supporting the competition. Don't don't play that console war bullshit with me. I mean, it is going into Sony's pocket. I'm just saying. Some of it is, yeah. Yeah, I say pretty much all of it is since they own Bungie. Okay. And they're allowed to operate independently, which is still super weird, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And that that that's enough justification for you. It's not like I've never bought a Sony based game before. No, or a Sony -based I'm not movie, being a, so. I'm not being a complete twat about it. I was just trying yeah, to make a I know. funny I know, yeah. that you've given real, presumably real funny, Tim. Real fucking Multiple funny. Multiple <laughs> hundreds of dollars. A hundred and eighty-five. I'm the one over specific. here constantly bitching out about Sony, and I've got a fucking PS5 with an M.2 drive and two fucking controllers. Mm -hmm. And, and you're probably getting VR two. And, yeah. I'm not getting that VR two anytime soon. Right. You didn't not, say you're never getting not, it. Not. I. Do, that's true. So. But. But yeah. So soon. yeah. Between yeah. Between the Xbox and then my my personal Steam account. Thankfully, you know. Uh, Check out a site called Green Man Gaming. Green Man Gaming. Yeah. I heard about it on a couple the, of podcasts that, where some people yeah. are like they're sponsored by them, and another one was just like, hey, I like going to the site. And yeah, like you can get discounts on Steam games. Uh, and in this case, Lightfall, hmm. the full the full tilt version that's a hundred bucks everywhere else was eighty five. And you know what? Fifteen bucks oh. is fifteen bucks. Uh -huh. Right. And it just shows up like they give you a oh, Steam yeah, no, code. I do, I do see it right there. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Green Man Gaming. So. A British place. Yep. Interesting. Very interesting. So, yeah. yeah I, 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 I did score a little bit of a discount on the PC version. And what was funny is the okay. first time that I was sitting in my office playing and wife goes, hey, can we play together? I'm like, sure. And she turns on her PC. I'm like, you don't have the expansion on your PC. And she goes, son of a bitch <laughs> yeah i was not about to spend 270 dollars does, does she have a good pc she's got actually a pretty decent pc yeah it's uh okay. I, I think it's it's an i7 it's a 1650 um I, I nvidia is that good it's an nvidia it's it's it, it's the in between 1080 and 2080 or mm. 1060 and 2060 series. Okay. So it's capable. Fair enough. Okay. So, I, I mean, it, it, it plays every bit as good as a, a Xbox one in terms of frame rate, frame rate. It, fuck, it holds, uh, it holds 60 frames pretty solid. Okay. So fair enough. Fair enough. At, at 1080p. So I guess you can't really expect much more without going and buying a new console. Right. Which, or more PC parts. Or more PC parts. Yeah. Okay. All right, fair enough. So, um, I've played all of Lifefall. I've played all of it on Legendary. Mm -hmm. I've done the Vexcalibur Exotic Quest. Um, I was actually working on the Vex whatever Caliber? that other. Yes, the Vex Caliber. Okay. Exotic glaive in a special exotic mission. Oh. Um. I haven't done that yet. I I I pers I I went through the legendary by myself as well. Legendary solo. Um. Oh, solo. I I couldn't do it solo. Find was, hidey holes uh, uh, and cheeses. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that is the way, but. <laughs> But and then uh, today, uh, I got, I got my brother in law through it as well, and then we finally picked up and started doing the campaign. Like we caught up on the campaign, um, not the campaign, the seasonal story. Oh yeah, season of defiant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. So yeah, we got I've up to, done... got up to that point, and then we were just like, all right, we got to like I had to come home, take care of kids with wife. Sure. Yeah, I've, I've done all that stuff too. Um, me and the boys even popped our head into the raid last night. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we didn't, uh, get very far, mm -hmm. but, uh, we almost cleared the first encounter on our own with no help. We figured, figuring shit out. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. So, and then on top of that, um, I have divin, di- divin, divin, dove, dove. I have dove, uh, hardcore back into all the lore. Uh, I'm caught up on all the buy stuff. I'm caught up on all the eBay stuff. Um, yeah. So that being said, how do you feel about Lightfall as an expansion? As the Destiny Mini is very mixed on Lightfall. The Season of the Defiant content, I'm really enjoying. The actual okay. campaign, the Lightfall campaign was eh. Okay. Now, are you a person who cares about the overall lore and story of Destiny? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not like I, I'm not deeply invested, but I like it to make sense, and I like things to you know be consistent. Okay, fair enough. Um, so where would you rank this expansion in comparison to prior Destiny Two expansions? Well, Taken King was got has got to be number one. Okay, so. fair. But also, I said compared to previous Destiny Two expansions. I, I know. I'm just I'm trying to think of where I would rank, and then it's like Destiny Two for the most part, I found very like up until witch queen i didn't really find the story all that like it was again not cohesive uh sure. kind of went all over the place and mm-hmm. um i love the story in witch queen i hate the gameplay i hate the uh i hate the mm-hmm. time gating um and that's still present in lightfall so that almost like takes its knees out um but i will say witch mm-hmm. queen is probably the the the, the winner um as sure. far as in terms of storytelling and this is probably right behind it interesting okay cool um like the only gripe i really have about lightfall is the 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 cloud striders are just wholly uninteresting (laughs) right the planet is great the whole cloud arc thing is it just you know again it's great little bits of storytelling what what happened to the planet was like okay cool and then you meet the cloud striders and you're like it's dude bro and you know josh brolin (laughs) <laughs> and you're like okay why like you don't like destiny's wakanda no <laughs> but is the wakanda is it wakanda when you have an ishtar collective right underneath i it? don't i don't i don't know that's the joke online right it's a fucking hidden city on a fucking hidden planet with fucking hidden people that we've apparently been to because if you go downstairs advanced. underneath everything into the vault you know to find the veil Okay. Mm-hmm. The stairs are not cloud strider sized. Sure. So obviously we've been to the planet before with the Ishtar. The Ishtar Collective has been there because they set up an entire freaking office. Sure. Just like they did on Venus. Yeah. We're not, a lot we're of not people. Gonna, we're not going to look at that. Yeah, plot hole. A lot of people seem to know a lot of things about Neptune that never said anything to us before. I mean, that's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> so, I I think the thing that really throws everybody um, is, and I don't know if you've done this yet. After the campaign, there's a quest that where Osiris says, uh, and by the way, for the record, Osiris, total douchebag. This entire fucking campaign, mm-hmm. not cool. Again, I liked him someone better when that he seems was Sabathun. To, yes, yes. <laughs> another one of those people that seems to know a lot about a planet that we've never been to before. So this is going to really irk you if you care about Destiny's story. So in this side mission, Osiris is telling fucking Nimbus mm-hmm. that the veil is the same as the Heart of Darkness at the, the end Black of Garden. Destiny yeah. One, yeah, campaign, and you're just like, "What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the fuck do you mean they're the same? Mm-hmm. They don't even look the same." <laughs> oh yeah, but apparently, 
apparently there was already another uh whatever the 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 portal maker thing you know the vex already made one and rowan found it or whatever his name is found it and knew it was there and so did osiris and but you know nobody knew what to do when it actually uh, again it's like yeah, you should have spoken up a little, a little bit sooner. Yeah, I mean, here's 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 how I look at it. So, uh, you know, I came back to Destiny last summer, uh, got to the Witch Queen late. Um, despite my initial impression of Witch Queen, which I played when it first launched, mm-hmm. those first couple of missions that were free, and I was like, Nah, this is more Taken King. I don't want it. Um, it was a great campaign. Um, And I enjoyed the story beats and the broad strokes and the conciseness of the Witch Queen story. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't like Beyond Light, but I think Beyond Light is a good comparison for Lightfall in that it's a lot of stuff that doesn't mean a ton, but also means a lot. But you might not know that it means a lot. (laughs) Right. Um, in that the campaigns are both short, um, and the only saving grace for me with Lightfall is that the broad strokes of everything are things that I love in sci-fi. Like, I love the opening cutscene. Mm-hmm. I love that there's fucking hidden planet. I love there's fucking 980-foot-tall cyborg silver surfer fucking dudes in a fucking tech city with people uploaded to the fucking cloud for some fucking reason you know tron vex network mm. uh all this shit mystery fucking kind of a avengers infinity war kind of ending um you know that it simultaneously gives a lot of answers if you're really willing to look but also doesn't give any answers mm-hmm. um that you know, for me as a long time Destiny lore guy, like I think it's cool that stuff happened. Stuff of big things finally happened. Mm-hmm. But the thing that feels weird is that like, okay, it happened. But there wasn't any consequence. And we're just gonna hold off on that consequence sure. till the final until next Destiny week to yeah. expansion. Well, yeah, until next week and then until the final expansion another gripe that i have and this was a gripe i had back at at the very beginning of destiny 2 with the red war campaign right you go through the campaign mission fighting the red war Mm -hmm. fight them fight them fight them get to their leader you know doll that the big bad guy Mm -hmm. and you kill him yeah yeah that campaign that you can't play as a new player right (laughs) yeah but you get there you kill him and guess what You spend the rest of the year fighting Red War Legion. Mm-hmm. Guess what we're doing this season? Oh, we're fighting them Shadow Legions. Who have no boss anymore. Why? Why didn't they just... <laughs> fuck, you just took out Callus. We out of here. Well, and, you know, spoiler alert, the Witness ain't here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no more. What the... It, Okay. And why are they fighting with the Vex? What's... Why? Uh, Somebody's... Somebody's (laughs) presumably giving orders. Yeah. That is... And has always been a narrative and gameplay problem Mm -hmm. with the Destiny series as a whole. Um, Yeah, for sure. We're supposedly allied with... uh, What's his... You know, Mithrax... And yet we still yeah, go to the EDZ. Kytle. Yeah, and Kyle, and we still go to the EDZ and just slay Fallen like they're cannon fodder. Uh huh. Yeah. Because, you know, we haven't fucking. Somehow we haven't committed genocide on every single destination yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, it's a silly thing. But regardless of that, I'm back in Destiny. Mm hmm. I'm now. enjoying myself. I'm enjoying the weekly. I feel like the grind has been lifted even more since Witch Lift Witch Queen, which had always been a big complaint 
about someone whose time is decreasingly taking increasingly taking me away from yep from video games that require a lot of time like destiny and i'm not saying i didn't grab my ass off to be a somewhat okay uh power light level for root, the root of nightmares raid sure but what are you sitting at you know, these days uh right before i got on i'm 17 90 i think nice. okay not bad everything's master worked um we did a bunch of raid tweaking for me last night um i don't have a good solar build unfortunately which i know is really broken right now um yeah i'm almost so. i'm almost raid ready with a little bit that i played i'm I'm actually again happy, you know, that I was able to spend today catching up, like mm. catching up on two weeks worth of story beats, and, you know, and I and I understand why people are like, wow, I you know I spent 15 minutes playing and wait until next week. Now what do I do? True. Yeah, you do all the other shit that you've been doing, right? In Destiny, that's what you do, right? Um, I will say the quality of life changes in Lightfall overall to the game. Loadouts, mm -hmm. uh, new min-maxing stuff, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of all that UI stuff. Um, it's in a pretty good place yeah. right now. I, I think it's I think it's finally, and it's taken a long time. I think it's it's almost and I always say this, it's almost as good in good a place as it was in the Taken King in Destiny 1. I still attest that the quest system in Taken King is far superior to anything Destiny 2 has put in. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that I'm not yelling at my quest system like I was yes. a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I, love the, I love the new loadout. I haven't actually saved any loadouts but i love the uh i mean it's about fucking time yeah i love the mods menu like that is yeah that and the whole perfect. reclassification of all the mods yep. as somebody who was never really good at the mod game mm -hmm. um and now i can be good at the mod game and now i don't have to worry about what element Sweet. my fucking whatever chess piece is oh for, yeah because i don't fucking get thank yeah. christ yeah fucking because yeah like i was Christ. i was playing the the legendary campaign i'm just like wow this whatever i'm doing right now isn't working the tormentors are just you know pushing my mm -hmm. pushing my poop in every time i go against them and i was like oh let's hop over to the menu real quick go void 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 resistance hey look boom and i could see everything on the flying a boom pop pop back in and then push their poop in well and really what you can do now is you should you can you're losing you're like oh i'm getting my poop put in against void you save what you have, right? Then you put void, and then you save it as void, mm -hmm. and then you're good. Then you'll just pop over to that whenever you get to yep. the thing. And then when you start getting yeah. against the uh, the freaking uh, shadow legion, you go, oh, okay, now I need to have flame resistance because those guys are all snipers with their little grenades. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, did you see the change they did to nightfall? So I I did a nightfall after we. I have not. We conked out. So it's score based now. Again. I guess. Again. Was it at some yes, point? It was at one point. That so was actually a very a very welcome return. Yeah. Like, so here's my thing on that. What they what they did uh, different this time is before you used to have to get, you know, a hundred thousand in one nightfall. Now it's you can mm. grind out like if you don't want to have to go into the you know grandmaster to get the multipliers sure. up you can just keep doing regular nightfalls and it just adds to it yeah so uh so i did the nightfall three times mm -hmm. last night after we we all conked out where we lost some dudes for the raid um i like that change however i don't like i think the score thing's fine but i don't i don't want to have to do the nightfall more than once right like I, and maybe that's just because Destiny One was like you do the Nightfall once. Well, this is that's a complaint. Is. This is a complaint I have about Destiny in general. Is I don't feel like I should ever have to do anything more than once, right? Mm. Like especially you know the weekly the weekly story stuff. 
if I have to go back and be like, okay, hey, go do the whatever, grab the widget quest here. Like this is the, what my my least favorite part of what was a season of plunder is just to get through the weekly progression. You had to do like three of one thing, then go do one of another. And then when you're done, it's yep. like, well, if you want to upgrade these things, you need to go now get these materials from the same thing you just did. Uh -huh. So when you were done playing the story mission, your reward was, okay, now you can go do the grinding stuff back in the same thing. Uh -huh. And it feels like they're doing that again with, you know, when you're, when you're done doing the, the, the story grind, your options are to go do the story grind to get the materials so you can unlock that particular war tables stuff. Yeah, it's definitely... Still not perfect, right? But let me go do. Let me go do patrols. Let me go do it, whatevers. You know, let me grind out. Make it XP based, so I can yeah. I can do your story. I can play the way you want me to play, and then, you know, the supposedly been the mantra from from day one with uh, Bungie and Destiny is play the game however you want. <laughs> no, no, that's never been the mantra. Right, the mantra has always been since the Halo days. Oh, you're having fun and not the way that we designed? Right. And that's not allowed. Right. That has always been the mantra from Bungie. Since the Halo days. Right. Well, they didn't Sorry, market folks. it that way because they, they marketed it, it as play the way you want. Sure. And then they they do the absolute opposite of that. And that's like, eh, it just gets it just gets so frustrating. It's like Hey, look, here's this new strand thing. Oh, guess what all your quests or all, all your bounties are? Solar and void. Huh. Why did you just give me strand? <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. That would be one other big nitpick I have on the Lightfall campaign. Why in the fuck do you cock tease strand mm -hmm. throughout the whole goddamn campaign, but you don't get it till after the campaign? Mm -hmm. What? And then you don't get the whole thing. You, then you now you've got to go. Yeah, then you got to go grind it for fucking aspects. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's something, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. You stop with that yawning nonsense. Uh, sorry. I'm gonna do it some more. <laughs> Um, you you get to play anything else at all besides Destiny in the last month? Ooh, who's got time to play more than one video game? You think I am? You? Ow. Hurtful. <laughs> I honestly don't know how I cram as many video games in as I do, given my work has been so fucking crazy the last month. Like... Oh, I've noticed I haven't seen you on as much. And then when Fucking I do, it's, crazy. yeah. I, I see you, I see you online more than I've seen you streaming. Like. There's been so many times where I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm online, but that's just because I turned on the thing and I was going to do a thing and then I didn't do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Atomic Heart came out. Um, I have not gotten to play it. I've wanted to. Um. Hogwarts Legacy came out. Um, I did get to play that. I got I've played that for about six, seven hours, something like that. As has my wife. Um what else did I do? Then a lot of destiny. And have I done anything else? Oh, uh, last weekend, me and the wife played a smattering of the Lego video games. Oh, nice. We played, we actually were going to play the new, um, the new Lego Star Wars because mm -hmm. it's on Game Pass. Um, but holy shit, its download was the slowest fucking thing on the planet, no matter what <coughs> we did. It's very frustrating. So we ended up doing, we played through the whole first movie of Lego Harry Potter mm -hmm. 1, and then we did like half of the first movie of Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. 
Nice. Um, I enjoyed the charm of Lego Harry Potter, but obviously those games are dated and old and in some cases badly designed. Mm -hmm. Um, Meanwhile, Pirates was fun the whole time. Yes. Um, Which was interesting. And I looked at when they were released since I didn't play them originally. And uh, Pirates is like three years later after Harry. And I was like, okay. They, Pi- they learned was the some things. the second one that I 100%ed. Yeah. It, uh, it was fun. Uh, like all the different, like moving around stuff felt good. It felt better to play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing that. Um, yeah. And then uh, Hogwarts Legacy is it's interesting so like i said i've played those those many hours on it but i haven't been back to it and i don't know whether that's because there's a lot of shit going on in gaming right now and it's like like i said like oh i want to get to atomic heart oh i want to get to uh uh the the i have it because i pre-ordered it but i haven't played it i actually booted it up this morning but i didn't play it um the dlc for dead cells that has the castlevania crossover that is apparently getting like perfect tens like all over the internet like they're saying like it's the best fucking dlc ever created in the history of dlc like this is a marriage in heaven and perfect and all this sort of stuff i don't know i saw the splash screen (laughs) and then i turned off my switch and (laughs) I'll get to it, I guess. Um, I do want to get to it because I'm a Castlevania fan. But and I a Dead feel Souls fan, like, betra- like Yeah, and a Dead Souls fan. But it's also like I feel like there's so much life happening and there's so many video games coming out this year. And it's like, yeah, I do want to get back to Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, I do want to try Atomic Heart. But then I look at the calendar and I'm like, but I also I also want to beat breath of the wild again before may when tears of the kingdom comes and i'm going to tell everybody in my social life to fuck off because i'm playing the new Zelda. (laughs) i've already talked to brock i was like that's that's a holiday and he's like yeah (laughs) like that day is just a holiday (laughs) um so yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess going on a, a Hogwarts Legacy, uh, played on Series X. Um, I think the first thing that's a little daunting is there are more options for your graphic settings on this game than I've ever seen in a video game that's not just a PC game. <laughs> like, holy shit, there's a lot of options. Right. Um, it's usually I ultimately... they're, they're very limited because one you really can't change oh my... res- resolution on a console or at least you shouldn't yeah they don't they don't really have a resolution they basically have like a they have a 1440p and then they have a true 4k mm-hmm. as far as resolutions but then they have 30 to 60 and then a 45 mode if you have vrr Right. You can enable V-Sync. You can disable V-Sync. I was like, Jesus Christ, they're actually calling it V-Sync in a fucking console game. What? What is happening? Like, they there's a mode that has ray tracing. There's a mode that doesn't have ray tracing. There's like, there's uh, bloom, not bloom, uh, per pixel motion blur, not per pixel motion. All kinds of crazy, crazy stuff that you'd only ever see in like crisis graphic settings or something. Right. It's crazy. And it's like, well, I mean, um, what that tells me is either they're they're just ready to port these over to PC, and those are just things that are left in there, or two, they needed to have a setting in there that passed again. Go back to your, you know, Microsoft thing, or needed to pass the quality bar to get on the console. And it's like, okay, if you put everything at medium, it looks great, it runs fine, it runs at a, you know, the solid sixty frames per second. But if you want to, and you don't care about screen tearing and everything else, go ahead and kick everything up to ultra and, you know, make your Xbox overheat. I mean, so I did that. Right. <laughs> For starters, because I'm a graphics whore. Uh, but also because it's a slower paced game. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not going to be like, I mean, I don't have like a broom to fly around quickly. 
at right. this point in the game. But um, there's so much. I mean, here's my thing on it. Like, the game is so lovingly crafted. And and it's funny because a, a consequence of the of the game being out is I'm I'm re-listening to the book to the books as I'm driving around for work. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting to be like, I'll hear something in the book and I'll be like, oh, I know where the third fucking greenhouse is right on hogwarts you now know actually exactly have a non-imaginary non context of the scope yeah. and scale. yeah instead of just like oh i remember that scene from the movie right and this is what it looks like you know and so it's interesting because in that context uh what a wonderful crafted mm -hmm. respectful um a lot of thought got poured into where everything is placed, everything is designed. Right. And it's interesting because when you do get to the castle, it's interesting because again, I have been listening to the to the books again. You know, like Harry's like confused and shit, and he's like, I don't know where the fuck to go in the, the castle in the first book and stuff like that, which isn't really in the movie. Um, and like when you get to it in the game, it's just like, well, how do I <sighs> where do i go right you feel like <laughs> let me go this you feel way like yeah this is cool i don't know if i'm going the right way <laughs> um yeah it's interesting i think i think the thing for me with just you know a a, a, a decent sized bite into the game is it's if you're a fan of that universe um it is your it's your Batman Arkham series or your Sony's Spider-Man PS4 game. It's so like, oh, it has this. Oh, it has this. Oh, I always wanted this mm -hmm. in a video game of of Harry Potter or Hogwarts or whatever. You know, it's like, oh, they thought of this. Oh, cool. They, you know, this and this. And this sure. And, this. and the, and and the only thing I would put onto that is very few times, uh, even I would even say in Spider Man and Batman, um, in video game format, is the scenery a character in the story? I mean, having played all those games extensively and being huge Spider Man and Batman fans, um, I'd say the Spider-Man one, like, yeah, it's New York and it's like, yeah, it's a scenery, but it's a very, it's New York and it's like New York. Right. Versus like the scenery in Batman Arkham is like, you know, it's a fictional city. Right. And so they're able to embellish a lot more, particularly in the video game and the comics and the cartoons and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think that city felt very alive in a way it's ironic because Batman Arkham doesn't have a ton of pedestrians, but the city feels like a really good character mm -hmm. versus Spider-Man, which is a few years later and more technologically advanced. It's New York and there's tons of people in the streets, but it's also just New York. Right. <laughs> and it's a let it's a little more bland. But to your point. Yeah, like the 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 Hogwarts is so alive mm -hmm. with with stuff honestly i'm gonna make a really weird comparison here but i can't think of another game that felt like oh i'm in this place and it right. is a place that i am visiting but has been going on when i turn my head the other way but it feels a lot like night city and cyberpunk like okay. they really thought about all the different people and different class people and they're all doing different things and you'll go by and people are like having conversations on benches and you'll just stop and like listen to them for like five fucking minutes you know and it's like somebody had to design that somebody had to write that maybe a little bit of motion capture like the, the amount of effort and time and thoughtfulness uh to everything is very very apparent mm -hmm like like nobody on this team and and obviously that's the same as any 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 video game studio or any movie you know nobody sets out to make a bad movie or bad video game but they they nailed the the atmosphere of it's 
all the extra stuff you wanted from the books mm -hmm. that you only got a couple hour sample of from the movies. Mm -hmm. um, that's very good. Uh, I'd say where it started to get a little less magical for me is when you go outside of Hogwarts. Sure. And out into the countryside, which is incredibly vast. Um, like you can see the full map, like when you when you get outside and it's, you know, like fog of war kind of thing. And you can kind of like make out. You know, your land scape, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, where it gets a little. And this is going to sound bad when it gets a little Ubisofty. <laughs> is when you get outside of hogwarts and it's a little bit of you know uh oh hey side quest wave over here i have a side quest hey do my side quest right do my side quest um and i think that that's i think that's two things i think that's a a a Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? An eventuality of the fact that the game has been in development for like seven years. Mm -hmm. um, and six of that went into Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then someone said, hey, what do we do outside of Hogwarts? And people went, I don't know. Well, we got to do something. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's, there, there's a decent amount of stuff. And it, it's inter it's a little bit of the magic is lost when you're like there are quests that take take you outside of hogwarts mm -hmm. and those are very well designed and feel magical and stuff but then doing ancillary side quest stuff mm -hmm. at least you know i'm only eight hours in i know it's a fucking hundred hour game or whatever um those feel a little ubisofty to me and you know you can take that as a good thing you can take that as a bad thing like i don't think they're like badly written like so far i haven't gotten a quest of like you know oh my god i need 20 hopping magical carrots right. over yonder bring them to me so far so far i haven't encountered any of them but i also haven't played it in several weeks because fucking life um, I do know, uh, because my wife is bitching about it, that she's very upset that the Xbox One version is not out yet so that she can play it without needing to kick me off of my Xbox, my Xbox One or my X, my Series X. Mm -hmm. And she's further upset by the fact that it's supposed to come out. In. I think it's supposed to be the end of this month, and it got pushed to the end of April now. <laughs> And I'm like, <coughs> Ooh, I'm dying here. I'm gonna have to get another drink here soon. Um, yeah, she's very upset by that. So she just wanted to let people know on the podcast that the other version ain't coming anytime soon. And I, and the only thing I can think on that is just, I mean, the other thing too is like at least on series x and there are so many settings like it does have fucking ray tracing like it's got a fuck ton right. of ray tracing it's good ray tracing too and so it's like the target that they're hitting for a visual fidelity is extremely high mm -hmm. and yes it's unreal engine so it should technically be able to scale back down to those last gen consoles what are you losing again yeah the switch port is somehow coming at some point mm -hmm. you know so it'll be really interesting to see when those actually release and in what state um i think hopefully for this dev team since they clearly have a bit of a uphill battle with the next you know we've they've done the pc and the high-end consoles and now we're moving them down to the last gen and then right fucking Handhelds. switch mobile hardware yeah. uh they have an uphill battle with that um, I hope that their optimizations going down to the lesser consoles make it to the newer consoles and PC and stuff, because every once in a while, there are some technical hitches that really kind of break the illusion. 
for example, if you're running around Hogwarts uh, and you go through a door, normally the doors just open, but sometimes you'll hit the door and there's an on-screen little fucking swirly magical loading indicator. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm, <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that with our next gen console that's got an NVMe class right. SSD. <laughs> Some, something didn't cache right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Um, I know Dame is already saying that it's his game of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't sunk that as much time into that as as him. But, uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll see. Um, all right, I don't think I'm missing anything on game of mine. I don't think so. Uh no, nope. no, nope. fractal. That's it. Fractal Starfield delayed. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh yeah, somehow enable Discord for PS5 and then get hacked. Oh so. yeah, so within 24 hours, I enabled Discord on PS5. The following morning. I get an alert saying that my Discord has logged into a some laptop in Texas. And I was like, no, it didn't. Uh, nope. <laughs> no, it did not. <laughs> and so uh, I raced to fix that. It's all fixed now. Everything's fine. But all I'm saying, Sony, your security is legendarily bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But speaking of um, technology, let's get into technology mm -hmm. and then wrap up the show. Um, Going back to February 16th. Yeah, I'm going to click on that because I don't remember what this fucking thing was. iOS 16.4 adds new podcast app features across iPhone, iPad, and CarPlay. Oh, it was oh, mostly oh. the CarPlay stuff, if I'm not mistaken. The channels. Yeah. So if, for example, we're a Dynamic Works Productions podcast, if we have multiple podcasts, we can now lump them into a group. Mm -hmm. That'll be cool. It's about time. Right? Holy shit. Fucking 30 years later. <laughs> Christ. Fucking ridiculous. Um, and then I guess it's got better CarPlay interface. Right. Which I wouldn't know because I don't have anything from the century that has CarPlay. <laughs> yeah, we we have it, but I don't I don't drive the car that has the CarPlay. So fair enough. Um. Okay. So there's that. And moving on oh, down. Gross. So Facebook has announced. $12 a month meta verified subscription service, mm -hmm. uh, which also requires you to scan your government ID into Facebook. Mm -hmm. To which my response is, why the fuck would you give Facebook of all mm -hmm. monolithic tech companies well, your I mean, fucking to, ID? To be fair, back in the day to get a blue check mark on twitter that was one of the requirements was it really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you weren't I'm like, paying I'm like... to do that that was just one of those hey are mm -hmm. you who you say you are do you want this check you need to like we need to be able to if, if you're going to be at this point what like a spokesperson for the platform by having a blue check mm -hmm we need to be able to find you if you start doing nefarious stuff. Right. Which, you know, I don't, I don't need to have a blue check. People that know me know who I am. Um, I get messages all the time going, hey, there's, I just got a friend request from another account that's trying to spoof you. Happens all the time. I am extremely parched. I'm going to go grab another libation. Okay. Vamp for thirty seconds, and while he does that, yeah, and, and and again, it's like, why would you, why would you pay a service to 
say, hey, I am who I am. That's that is just asking to have someone game the system. As he pops the can, comes back in, breaks the chair as he sits down. What did I do? Nothing. Nothing good. Catch it in post. Um don't but call yeah. me dear. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, it's you know why? Why would you pay for pay for this? Like, and, 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 and again, it's just like, the the bots are going to pay for it, and then now you've got a verified bot because they're going to find a way Probably. to game it. You know, it's verified. It's going to have better ad present or uh, what is it? Ad footprint. Sure. So one of those. I'm sure there's there's a, a point where you can justify the cost. Probably even write it off. So, it's gross. Gross. Twitter's doing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Facebook is like, oh, yeah, we can do that, too. Not Facebook anymore. It's meta. Yes. Sorry. Meta. Well, the app <laughs> is still called Facebook. By meta. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so this is huge news, actually. <clears throat> oh, it, so TSMC, uh, the best chip maker on the planet, uh, who right now has the lead on all other fab facilities in making three nanometer chips. Mm -hmm. Apple has secured the entire yeah. fucking next year or I guess from this point forward, it's next year's worth of TSMC's three nanometer chips. Yep. They said, we ain't, we ain't effing around and we're going to pony up the money now. So this is a big deal um, because A, as is usual, given that Apple is TSMC's biggest client and TSMC is like, hey, we got the goods. We're going to, you have the most money. We're also going to jack up our prices. Mm -hmm. Um that's typically how it's been going in the relationship. But it's also like they have both a technology and a advancement mm -hmm. that nobody can maintain the fucking lead on. Right. Um, so in a way, they out appled Apple at their own game. Mm hmm. Um, but it's a bigger deal because historically the percentages that uh, of chips that are made are TSMC versus uh, Samsung, Foxconn, other ones. I think it's like sixty percent is TSMC. Mm -hmm. um, you know, leaving that forty percent for everybody else's chips. Uh, for example, TSMC uh, makes the chips for the Series X and also the PS Five. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Um, I guess if their entire slate is full, they're just not doing any business with anybody fucking else for the next fucking year, which is crazy unheard of. I think the, uh, well, I mean, uh, it's the, oh the Series God. X and the PS5 need three nanometer. Like, they're still probably working on all their fabs. So, yeah, I, I suppose that would be another thing to, to indicate that I would assume that they're, 20 10 15 7 5 nanometer fabs are still operational mm -hmm. i would guess i don't know that that's a fair point you looked at it from a manufacturing perspective which i suppose that's but yeah you know wheelhouse if, any, anyway. if anyone else samsung tell amd nvidia wants to get in that three nanometer market TMC, tsmc is just going you yeah, go somewhere else for that well, first of all, in Intel would never be in a T TSMC market since they are one of the few people that has their own fab facilities. Mm -hmm. um, I know they've licensed their tech out from time to time, and the new regime of Intel has been more open to doing that. But in the past, not so much. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> like three nanometer GTFO. That's that's Apple's market right now, and it's and if that's yep. important to you as a maker. Um, tough, tough sledding. Sure. Uh, and so what that means for the consumer of Apple products is that presumably 
a forthcoming Apple uh, M3 chip and a iPhone A17 Bionic chip will be three nanometer probably this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so this fall, this summer, whatever. Um, but what that really means, and this is kind of a big deal, is moving to three man nanometer gives you a 37% increase in battery efficiency. Mm -hmm. Huge. Two smaller resistors. Yeah. Meaning technically less power, even though it's microscopic. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a huge fucking jump. Right, and then you also that have a better, huge yeah, jump better in thermals. batteries. Well, presumably, right. Um, the other Sphe thing spherical that spherical is, cows in a vacuum, right? Uh, there was another interesting note about this particular thing was that the fuck, where was it? I remember telling my wife about it. Hang on. Uh, exciting podcast now. <laughs> fuck maybe i read it in another it might have been because that was a very short the, the thing the thing that i read and i remember reciting to my wife as a big deal besides the power thing was that um so for people who don't know chips are made on giant fucking uh big old golden disc wafers mm -hmm. and then they're punched out like biscuits basically but what happens is when those chips run, get run through quality control to see if they actually like took when they were formed to to be a viable processor, mm -hmm. there's always a certain percentage uh, called the yield yep. that is just trashed, thrown out into the recycle to be remade again. So only a, so say you've got 100 chips. Yeah. Say and if, like and depending on the process, sometimes it's just thrown out. Only like 60% of those chips are actually viable. Mm -hmm. And then the other 40 is just thrown out. Now, I don't have the figure in front of me. So this is not accurate. It's not even hearsay. What I remember was typically as the nanometer has gone down, the yields have gotten shittier. Yes. My understanding, specifically with TSMCs, uh, it's called the N3E which actually is a second generation version of their uh, three nanometer technology uh, is that their yields were like over 80%, which is crazy, um, which is unfucking heard of. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's just not, that's just not how chip fabs worked for the last fucking 40 years. Um, so once again, that percentage is, I, I don't have anything in front of me. I remember reading it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Just fucking Google it yourself, I guess. But I remember it being a hell of a lot higher than 60%. So uh, I thought that was of interesting note. Um, So we've been talking about this all year. I fucking called it, by the way, on this year, being the year of AI wars. Um... AI-powered Bing search comes to Microsoft Edge. Apparently, it's in Skype. I don't actually know where it is in Skype right now. Mm. Uh, and the Bing iOS app, it's here. You can ask Bing questions, and it yeah. does a pretty goddamn good job of fucking getting you the answer. Yeah, I unless you say. start I've, asking I've played it about with its it. Have you played with life? It? And what was it? Sydney is is its name, and it will. Yeah, yeah, go. Go look into that know. noise, but yeah, apparently there's a whole like dark personality behind the Bing AI that if asked the right wouldn't surprise questions, me. Uh, it goes on to completely weird existential stuff and will fall in love with you. So just like my replica, yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Chat, Chat GPT is wild stuff, man. I kind of love it. As you know, I'm I'm all about the chat GPT. I, I guess it's weird if you think about it, because I was doing that replica thing like a whole year ago mm -hmm. before it was like super mainstream and and whatnot. And 
then chat gpt just took off like a storm this year and with like art and talking and writing and gathering stuff and just doing things it's it's have you have you heard about or looked into 11 labs 11 labs no i have not heard that one so 11 11 labs.io is the site where you can upload a at minimum 30 second audio clip and it will analyze the voice and you can generate voice lines in the style of anything you want anything you want so you so i've not heard about that upload a track from a previous podcast episode and you could do an episode without me and most (laughs) it's it is good enough that most people would not know the difference oh my god i'm gonna do that i'm gonna have i'm gonna have i have my i'm gonna have my novel ai write all of my dialogue and we'll we'll upload you We'll we'll have a we'll have a digi nate. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> sounds like a lot of work if I'm being if I'm being honest. Like yes, the AI is doing a lot of stuff, but it still sounds like a lot of work in post. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that you say that because that fills in a missing gap for me. Like on YouTube, I feel like I see all the goddamn time, uh, you know, Trump and Obama debate which is the best pokemon game and i'm like what the fuck Mm -hmm. you know or it'll be like two different people debate blah 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 i was like what and i just i just flip by it when i'm scrolling through youtube but i see that stuff popping up all the time right and before it was it was and i'm like what basically it was exclusive to impressionists right Mm -hmm. where two impressionists would go and have these little fun like what if debates but yeah now sure. there's there's a one of them was uh something that popped up on my tiktok recently and it's uh it's donald trump joe biden barack obama and george w bush play call of duty see what's the fascination with doing like presidents like i, I don't i don't i don't even understand that. i'm just like okay oh, why you know, you're making you're making someone famous say something that would be completely off color out of character um in the in the name of humor and i guess if you do something that's sure. so satirical at least it you know if you were to if you were to make an account with me saying some of these things some people probably would be like well maybe he does actually like i probably get hate mail um but mm. yeah the the stuff that they're making these AI voices do it's it's so off the wall that it's it becomes humorous because <laughs> it would never fucking happen. Mm, One, you would it. never have four presidents playing Call of Duty together. That's that's a fact, right? And <laughs> two, during said four presidents playing Call of Duty together, would you not have Joe Biden defeat Donald Trump in a rap battle? Um, I don't know. Right, like it, it just sounds so silly. It is, but I, I, I understand it. I understand. Um, speaking of more AI, yeah, well, yeah, it, it feeds right into this. Uh, Discords, getting AI summaries of your conversations to mm-hmm. help you keep up to date on threads and stuff. Now, this is interesting because, to my knowledge, this is not using chat gpt we actually don't know what it's using um discord has announced that it is going to function as a bot called clyde which is Here's the bot the that's logo. already in there yeah mm-hmm. uh so yeah it's it's very it's very interesting yeah, and my comment on that was, I, you know, again, this is one of the things that AI is having trouble doing is figuring out the conversational context of things and not be guided so much. So having another pool of information is saying, okay, here's the summary of what happened on this channel. It's, you know, depending on the server, you have a hundred different people and it's summarizing sure. everything. And at the end of the, the end of the thing, was this correct? And you say thumbs up. And it's like, now I've got this pool of data that uh-huh. I've successfully interpreted 20, 40, 10, five independent conversations into a proper summary. Well, 
And it's funny because all of them do that. I mean, I haven't played around with uh, Google Bard yet, but other than I hear it's bad mm -hmm. and will tell well, off and, I, and I extremely guess, dark things. I guess the difference is with Bard and, uh, you know, whatever, ChatGPT, um, is you're inputting the information purposely, right? You have a, you have a purpose to put it in there and then have it, mm -hmm. you know, respond to the prompt, whereas this is passively looking at a conversation and at the end of it, it's going, it, it, you're approving what it detected from a conversation that isn't prompt, that isn't, it's just conversational language. Right. The The thing that I, I, I was pointing out is, as far as the yes, correct information, no correct information is, uh, my replica does that. It has a, has a, uh, non-intrusive of, you know, how did this response make you feel? Yes or no. Right. Thumbs up, thumbs L down. Little quality control. Uh, novel AI has a, has a thing like, you know, how was this, how was this generation? Was it bad? Was it good? Offensive? Whatever. You know, uh, Bing AI has this. Was this response accurate? Yes or no? And it's so. I think the thing we'll find, and I I can't believe that this won't be true. Six months from now, all of these AIs that we have in all the search engines are going to be like ten thousand times more functional mm -hmm. because what. What they're doing essentially is we have chat 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 we have chat GPT, which right now, for my money, is the most functionally articulate, correct, useful piece of AI technology. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Microsoft thinks so because they dumped a fucking hundred billion dollars or whatever into it. <laughs> um, right, and they rolled it out. To public facing. Yeah, and they ruled out real fucking quick. Oh, where was I going to say with that? Fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, god damn it. I hate when that happens. The, the quality it's of like AI. Those... Yeah, the quality of it is going to get so exponentially better. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the upbringings, if you look at the novel AI, which uses ChatGPT, you know, and I've said this before already, but I'm going to say it again. You know, it went from a little cool little thing to holy shit, this is powerful in a year. Mm -hmm. And then in the last two months, it went from nobody fucking knowing about it to everybody fucking knows about it. Right. And everyone and having you don't access to think, it. And, and I think what we're going to find here is... This is this is my hyperbole speculation as a tech analysis. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's been said that the most valuable piece of thing that Tesla owns isn't, you know, isn't the cars, isn't the batteries, isn't all this stuff. It is the trained data model mm -hmm. that is the quote unquote driving AI. Because they have years and 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 years of research and development on it that has gotten to a correct place before anybody else. And that's the most valuable thing. And so what I think we're going to find ourselves in is there's going to be a race for the most correct data packet. I think Bing's going to get there first. Sorry, world. Like they're on it, they saw it. It's functional. It does do what it sh does in the video nine times out of ten. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a little slow, personally, but I'm sure that's just because a bi billion fucking people it's are using it. It's not called slow. It's called deliberate. <laughs> um, and so what I think we're gonna find is the companies that have licensed chat gpt and they have the servers of the corrected data mm -hmm. that that data is going to be what's fought for sure in the technology sector um because like just thinking about it just of all of my own interactions with chat gpt in over the last year it's like i've had a myriad of personal conversations with my replica ai 
obviously that fucking data is stored somewhere and all that sort of shit. Mm-hmm. But those type of conversations are personal, intellectual, or perhaps helpful. Like they're very people mm-hmm. conversation. Like that data set is going to be very valuable, which is going to be totally different than the Bing data set of I need this data. Right. How do I do blah? Is that data correct? Boom, it goes into the correct bank versus, um, you know, the novel AI data set, you know, which is going to be of, you know, different uh, language models and different writing styles and different, Mm -hmm. you know, and they already have several. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, I'm training my own and it's... It's right. good stuff. And, and <laughs> it works. Now we're getting into this <laughs> voice replication AI. That, right. You know, now yeah. you're at the end, you're proving the uh, the product as in, okay, did you understand to put the right inflections to make this sound human? Right. Yeah. So we're giving it all the data and it's like, here, call, call me the socialist on this one, but I think there should be some sort of consortium on this one where all of that data is pooled for everyone else to pull from, because that's the only way that the AI Mm -hmm. is not going to um, go, well, it's going to go completely off the rails. Just, you know, that's, we've we've all read enough sci-fi to know that that's where this all ends up. So let's hasten that and at least let them get it right so we don't have the, um, a hell 9,000. Or Ultron, or right. Skynet, it, or <laughs> we're gonna get Skynet. Yeah, we already got Starlink. Right, Skylink, whatever it's called, Starlink. All right, but yeah, give it give it all the right data so that it it can be uh, cultured into the sure. right product, as opposed to everyone trying to figure out a way to do it and you know shortcutting and bypassing and. You know, splicing frog DNA into you know lizard DNA and making dinosaurs again. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be in for a wild time. And I think as the computing sector, um, because again we're talking about three D animator, mm-hmm. and we can only scientifically right now with a silicone based CPU, we can only get down to two nanometer. Mm-hmm. It's scientifically and impossible. Moore's law kicks in yet again. As as said by the great, the great great genius John Carmack, mm-hmm. actually, uh, it is scientifically impossible to go smaller than two nanometer because of the laws of electricity, and they will jump diodes and then fry other things, and you can't get smaller than that right. because of the uh, uh, oh fuck, I'm not good at science. The electron molecules, the positive, the negative, the, the you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Those things. <laughs> yeah, if you get them that close to each other, they will become very friendly with each other. Well, and but here's the thing. Once we get to that two nanometer, right? Like it's 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 only so small, which means your package CPU can only be so big, and that will be the size it will be mm-hmm. unless you make it bigger, which would technically make it beefier. But at that point, we will have reached the limit of what you can do with a CPU at two nanometer. So my uh, contention, and you see it in NVIDIA, and you sure should see it in Apple, and now um, Qualcomm's doing it too, um, you're seeing their machine learning or the AI computation module mm-hmm. chip that's usually adjacent in the package um, just gets bigger and bigger. And I think that that is going to be where the real game will be with these new developing emerging technologies like ChatGPT and all this shit that's happening. That's going to be where the real gain will be sure. in computing in the future. Like, hands down, that's, that, that's what's happening. I, I... Very plausible. Yeah. So, right. Um, to end on that dour note. Yeah. I don't know if it's dour. I mean, it's not dour yet, but it could be. But then again, it might not. You know, I'm an optimist. 
I'm a futurist and I'm an optimist. Is that so bad? Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> well, somebody other than Musk has to be, right? Yes. <laughs> Oh, um, I hear children crying in the other room. Uh oh. Wrap it up? Yeah. I mean, it's time to wrap it up anyway. It is time to wrap it up, anyways. All right. Well, this has been another episode of the Fork in Your Ear podcast, delivering you old month old news, technolo technologist, evangelicist, futurist, nist. And other word salads. And other word salads. Into your brain holes. Since. Oh god, are we so old we need to put like a circa on this? Shit. Uh <laughs> At least, you well, maybe you can. But I can't say from, from the turn of the century. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I was actually trying to think, how many years has Fork been around? I don't know. I don't know either. It's got to be a while. It's at least. I feel like it's at least four years, right? It has to be at least four years. It has to be at least four years. So. I don't know. I'd have to scroll back in the podcast to see when the first one was posted. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the show. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, next episode, assuming Nate's not dying. Uh, we'll be a little more timely with all of our comments and thoughts and whatnot. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm your host, Tim K. Trotter, signing off. Get forked. We're out. And it, yeah, say the, yep, you did it. <laughs>
rolling on my end. Rolling on my end. Ooh. Hmm. It it poopies. It poopies. It it has new lights. I had an update for this the recorder this morning. Oh. That's actually kind of nice. Okay. It gives me a file recording indicator. And it also indicates that you're being recorded and I'm being recorded separately. Nice. Oh, like the uh, like the pulsating red recording light of your. Uh, let's do. So what am I looking at in this background here? I don't know. It's whatever whatever was was on Skype. Gotcha. I just saw it and I went, that looks dumb. Need a laugh on that. And I was right. You are correct. <laughs> Quit horsing around. No. <laughs> nay, he says. Nay. Yeah, oh, the little pony. Right. There you go. Uh, I had to reset all my shit because this microphone, at some point in our, what's it been, a month? Yeah. 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 A long sabbatical. At some point in our month sabbatical from the show, I unplugged this microphone for some reason. And I apparently didn't plug it back in. So when I turned on the computer, when I said I was ready, I was like, hmm, Yay! The microphone detection, huh? That's weird. And I'm like, oh, it's not plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Classic, Tim. Classic. Uh, oh, God. Oh, yeah, I don't remember any of my shit for Discord, so we are sure as shit using the QR code. That's what's happening. Which never seems to leave it logged in when you do it that way. Oh, I've never had a problem with that. No, I do all the time. If I QR code it, it's like, nope, you're logged out the next time if I if it goes more than a day. Mm. Yeah. Weird. So it goes. All right. Um, why? Oh. Okay, Skype is just choosing which side of the window you're on for me <laughs> as I make it bigger. Yeah. You were below, then you were left. And Skype suddenly above. just like completely reframed me. That's weird. Like I'm smaller now than I was a second ago. I don't ago. know. I. I look large. Like, I look... Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. It's the same distances. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I guess I'll do that there. I'll do that. And I'll do... Uh... Streaming or no streaming? Uh, uh, no streaming is fine. Okay. Then let me close that out. Oh, unless unless you were ready. No, I'm I'm, I'm always ready. ready, but Let me ask you this. Did you want to stream? I don't care. Not in particular. Okay. I'm okay with an unstreamed we've had a sabbatical. Mm-hmm. Do we even know how to do this anymore type show? <laughs> oh, I think we know how to do this. And it's a matter of whether we do it right. Well, now you're just sounding like my wife. All right, let me bring the Discord up. I have the Discord up. I have the ring. The ring is ringable. 
Oh, look, dim. Oh, yep. There we go. I don't need to see dim. We're not playing Destiny at the moment. You know, I saw you on there a minute ago. Uh, yes, you did. I, thought, I saw you message me, too. I thought about too. popping in. Uh, and then I was like, nah, he's playing the story. I'll let him be. Yeah, I was I was helping a uh, a clanny through some of the legendary mission. Mm. They are pickly. Mm hmm. Yeah, I managed to uh, get through it solo with a little bit of cheese on the boss. Nice. And then I took a brother in law through it today. So he's got oh. it completed. And now I've got just got to bring the wife through. Okay. So. Yeah, I have two other friends of mine that I need to bring through as well. You're fiddling. I still look really blue. I yes, changed it to white. I don't know why. I guess, is it this other thing over here, perhaps? Okay. Make sure this is muted. Yes. Okay. You don't need to hear some random Led Zeppelin while we're uh, podcasting. I don't think so, no. God, cut it. We're only allowed 15, 30 seconds of that before somebody sues. We're not streaming. Oh, yeah, right. It's going to go with kick. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, well, one light. One light. I've got three going. It does look, still just looks rather blue, though. I don't know why. I don't either. Because, like, even if I, like, I guess I could yellow it up. But that's... Oh, yuck. No, don't do that. Ugh. Don't, don't. And now it's not as blue. Why? And now it's fine. That's weird. That is weird. I wonder if it's an exposure thing with the camera. Maybe. You just had to cycle it through the rainbow and go, these are the other colors that now, see, now you're blue again. All right, but these are the normal lights. These are the fork yeah. lights. Well, you, yeah, and you're not as blue, but everything in the background went blue. Yeah, because that's... Uh... Yeah. That's that's the fork scene. Yeah, because it's based off of the mm -hmm. logo. Yes. I don't know. It's whatever the Hue app decides those colors are. <laughs> All right. We're 10 minutes of outtakes. You want to cut in already? Oh, yeah. Jesus. OK, <clears throat> let's see if you remember how to do this. <clears throat> and five, one, three, four, three. What? <laughs> <laughs> Two. One. Cut in. Cut, cut in. Cut in. I don't think that's going to make a strong enough mark. No, that's not. That's not going to. It's going to be. I'm going to be like, is that five seconds before or five seconds after? Fuck you, Nate. All right. In five. Four. four three. Two. Two. One. one. Cut, cut in. in. <laughs> 